Hello, Club Culture family. If you're on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell. And if you're on your favorite streaming platform, thank you for tuning in and make sure you leave us a rating. This is episode 100. One honcho. This is the season five finale in real life. I have my great good friend with me, Naima, Neen Bean, Nate Dog, with me today for this episode. How you doing, Naima? I'm good. Don't be shy. Am we got to. We gonna break your shell. We gonna get you together. I, Don't be. I'm good. I'm good. You good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, hopefully you can get better through this episode. Um, now I got an array of things for us to talk about. Now bear with me, y'all, because my friend is 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 a little scared. She's a little she's a little shy. So I'm gonna break her down a little bit. See if we can get her a little bit more comfortable. So. I want to start off with weird and all. And weird and all is I'm going to give you some headlines. Mm-hmm. And you just let me know if you think it's weird and all. And you get one sentence to explain why. Okay? Okay. All right. So, uh, Atlanta ranks third in new HIV infections nationwide. Is that weird or no? No. Why? I just feel like that's normal for that city. For that city? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh... Snakes almost on a plane. TSA discovers a bag with small snakes in passengers' pants. Is that weird or no? That's weird. Why? Snakes in the pants? Yeah. No, that's weird. Okay. I can't even explain why that's weird. You just just listen to the sentence. (laughs) Just listen to the the statement. (laughs) Uh, Shawnee Henderson reflects on past relationship with Shaq in her new memoir, she says, I don't know if I was ever re- really in love with the man. Is that weird or no? That's weird. Why? How many kids does she have with Shaq? Like five? Five or four or whatever. Yeah. And, and she says she's never in love? Yeah, never was in love. With a man she had five kids with? Mm-hmm. That's enough is, that's enough is said at that point. Okay. Okay. She can't figure out he was weird. Okay. <laughs> the five kids. Okay. We're going to go back to that. We're going to go back to that one. <laughs> now, that was the regular way of playing weird or no. Mm-hmm. But because I have, this is season five finale, we got to switch things up a little bit. I want to play Weird or No Social Construct Edition with you. Lord. Now, we haven't done this in a very long time on a pod. So if you are new, Social Construct version of Weird or No is I'm going to give Naima some, some, some statements. And she lets you know if they are weird or not. And she still gets one sentence to explain why, but they're just not headlines this time. Mm. Now, you be in these streets, man. You, know. you be in these streets. <laughs> not at all. Or you once were in these streets heavily. Yeah, 2021. Okay. <laughs> and so I got some, some weird or not that are the dating, that they're dating uh, statements, right? Mm-hmm. So, boom. A man says he never got married because he didn't want his mother to feel second to any woman. Is that weird or no? That's very weird. Why? Being a mama's boy, that's a red flag. Okay. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) That's a red flag. Uh, A first date to a man's house. Is that weird or no? Yeah. Why? From experience, it's weird. I feel like the first meetup should be in person. I mean, it is in person at his house. No, in person, in public. Okay. Like the house, kind of a setup. Okay. A man who does not have any close friends. Is that weird or no? No friends? No this close friends. Alone, lonesome? Mm-hmm. Mm, no, that's not weird. Why? I don't think it's weird. Okay, why? Because I'm the same way. I mean, I have like a couple, a handful. Uh-huh. That's what you mean. Like, Are they close friends? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, are you talking about like he just alone all the time? Close friends, but I didn't say just friends. I said don't have any close friends. Okay, never mind. That's weird. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like knowing the male mind, as much as I learned over the years, I feel like they should have close friends in their like proximity. Okay. They should have somebody to lean on. So. Okay. Uh, a good friend who is friends with one of your ops is—is is that weird or no? Yes, that's weird. Why? A friend with one of my ops. Yeah, your yeah, your good friend is friends with one of your enemies. Yeah, that's, that's back door. Back door. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I've been through. Yeah, that's no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
A friend who is always in and out of relationships. Is that weird or no? No. Okay, why? You got to weigh out your options. <laughs> you got to weigh out your <laughs> options. I mean, I don't shame nobody for their dating life. I made a lot of mistakes. Okay. In my dating <laughs> life. So, if you, if you need to find the right one, that's perfectly fine with me. Okay. But don't just make sure it's not toxic to the friendship. Okay. Uh... A a forty three year old adult dating a twenty three year old adult is that weird or no? Yes, it Why? doesn't matter if it's roads like it doesn't matter if it's some man that's forty three and a woman that's twenty three. So what you said? Mm-hmm. And and it said doesn't adult. matter. Opposite. Okay. No, it doesn't matter. That's okay. weird. Okay. That's extremely weird. <laughs> like it could be your daughter or son age. That's okay. Weird. Yeah, that's weird. Okay. Last one. Um, an adult with Multiple kids mm-hmm. that has a dating standard of not dating anyone with kids. Is that weird or no? Yes. What? W- wait, what was yes? Yes this, to what? It's weird. Okay. <laughs> yes, it's weird. Why? You should, uh, sometimes you just should date a reflection of yourself sometimes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes okay. you should date a reflection of yourself. You shouldn't have that as a standard when you are not the standard yourself. All right. That's what I feel like. Okay. Hey. Now, just thank you for playing weird or not with me. For one. And then two, I want to talk about some of the stuff that some of your replies. So the one you just spoke on, would you say that you should date your standard period? Like whatever you encompass is what you also should date? Um, yeah. That's what I feel like. So let's say I make... 55k a mm-hmm. year. I got one one kid and I'm a single parent. Mm-hmm. And let's say that I have a reading level of <laughs> reading level. I have a reading level of a of a, a sixth grader. Uh-huh. My standard should be at that level too of all those things I just listed. You can attempt uh-huh. to go higher. Mhm. Uh-huh. But that person, the higher standard person that you're trying to go for is, is going to realize that you have the sixth grade education. They're going to realize that you aren't where they need to be. So they're eventually going to let you go. Okay. That's how I feel. That's how you feel? Yeah. Have you seen it play out that way? Um, where you've seen people that are intellectually more uh, superior than the other person, they probably make more. And let's say that they don't have kids. You've seen... You seen this happen? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have. Okay. Have you dated people that are you I would say standards are inferior to yours? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now did you know that coming into those relationships or did you learn it? Both. Both. Sometimes I knew, sometimes I tried to like give it a pass, but eventually, like it shows that this person they're aware that they're at where they are. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then they were that you're somewhere else. So mm-hmm. then they try to, like, bring you down. And that's when you have to cut the person off. Because I did talk to somebody who was, like, he made probably, like, not a lot. Like, uh-huh. 20000 a year or something like that. Okay. He didn't make a lot. Uh-huh. But, like, with <clears throat> sad comments that he would make, like, oh, you big money. Oh, you think you this. You think you that. Oh, this is a, this a 2022 car. Oh, like, they would make, like, certain comments, like, that's related to my income or mm-hmm. related to who I am or what I've accomplished, like my degree, mm-hmm. things like that. But they couldn't say that for themselves. And it kind of showed, and then it would be like, they try to like bring you down, call you out your name, things mm-hmm. like that. So that's the type, like I had to cut that off like as soon as that happened. And when that you say sense. call you out your name, like, 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 like the B word. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. Off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. So, and it was easier to cut that person off because I knew that they weren't where I was. So it was no second chance after that. After uh-huh. you calling me out my name, disrespecting me for literally no reason, uh-huh. it was easy to be like, <clears throat> it was easy to be like, no, bye. <laughs> like, it's uh-huh. not really worth that. So, so the people that are more closer to your standard of living, mm-hmm. it's harder to, to cut them off? It is. <laughs> Why you think it so? is, but I don't know. The people that are like, on my level, um, that have the like same income that I have, mm-hmm. they haven't been that way, like disrespectful. 
and like calling me on my name, they haven't really been that way to me. They just seem like more busy that they don't have time for me because they're working as much as I'm working. Mm hmm. Um, so it is easy to cut that off because you're like, oh, this is a good established person. You got a good income. Mm -hmm. But I hold people accountable for a lot of things. So sometimes that don't really be mattering. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I got one more thing. Now, mm -hmm. we, we, we like to talk about popular uh, pop culture or just hot topics that's going on in the world. And then we like to bring it and reflect it onto our lives. So one of the headlines that I had read off to you was um, Shaq's ex-wife, Shawnee. Mm -hmm. Henderson, and she she said that she don't think she was ever in love with Shaq. And you said that that's weird, cause yeah. like how you can't you, you've ever been in love before? Feel like you've ever been in love? I feel like I thought I was in love, but I really wasn't. Okay, okay. I can't really say I recently that I've been in love. Like, okay. Mm. So, do you feel like if you've been with somebody for a very long time and shared a bunch of moments with them that it's weird to not... Okay, when you say that it was weird, do you mm -hmm. think that it was weird on her part or that's just weird to be with someone for so long and never be in love with them? Probably both. Okay. To be with somebody for that long, mm -hmm. to have, like, a whole family, have kids, to establish a home, mm -hmm. and to not be in love at all, yeah. it doesn't make you feel like, is it the money? <laughs> like... Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's really weird. She she also said, because that was just a headline, but she mm -hmm. also said, like, she loves him, but she was never in love with him. Does that make it less weird with that context? Did she give reasons? Was it his personality? Or did she just... Was yeah, it she gave reasons. Was it that vague? She gave reasons. Oh. So she said, like, he wanted to be a megastar. And so he was out here doing shit that wasn't out of love. And so she doesn't think that she was ever in a state of love with him. She just loved him. And she being with him, she did get to experience, like, the role life and having a celebrity status and just being around shit that a lot of us have never been around before. Mm -hmm. She got to experience those things by being with him. And but she just feels like because of his past ingressions, discretions, she's never was able to be in love but she has love and what and did does love him so she wasn't in love because was he cheating he yeah. was cheating and all that yeah, stuff he was a he was a serial cheater oh shit. well that just changes the whole <laughs> that changes the whole context i mean uh okay that changes everything then okay. if he was doing all that i don't know Shaq was doing all that i did hear yeah. Shaq say that he has a lot of regrets in yeah. his life stuff like that yeah but I mean, then that makes sense then. Like, okay. if you can have love for this person because it's somebody you built a family with, but at yeah. the same time, they're dogging you out. But you kind of, some people, like, when they have kids, mm -hmm. they feel like they still have to stay together just to keep the, the, the family. Yeah, the family dynamic, like, balanced. Um, so that makes sense that she had love for him, but wasn't in love if he was, has all this uh, adultery. Yeah. Things like that. So yeah. that makes sense. Okay, I got I got one more before we get to know. I guess we can get a little bit more into your life through this question, but um, you come from a two parent household, right? Mm -hmm. Your parents are married. No, they're yeah. not married. They they just been together for a very long time <laughs> since nineteen ninety six. They black they black uh, they black people married. Yep. <laughs> and um, you are the oldest. Mm -hmm. of all your mom and father's children. And so with you being the oldest sibling, you were able to experience your mom and dad uh, for a longer time than your other siblings. And so mm -hmm. whatever version they have is probably not the same version that you have. Would you say that? Or do you think y'all all equally view y'all parents the same? <laughs> no. I don't think we view our parents the same at all. Okay. <laughs> I feel like we all can live in the same house but have a different experience with parents. Okay. Like even when my brother describes my mom, I'm like, I guess that's what you think. Or if you describe my dad a certain way, I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. Like, uh -huh. it, you just all have different views of our parents. Like, okay. they like treat us different anyway because you get treated different because you are older. Or he, my brother might feel different that he's treated different because he's a middle child. Uh -huh. And then Kobe, you know, the youngest, he just gets babied. So it's like you get different aspects and I'm the only girl so mm -hmm. that definitely matters when you're in a house full of, with two other boys 
they get way more leniency uh-huh. than I get in like a lot of areas. Okay, what are some of the leniencies that you you feel like your brothers got over you? Um, like my brothers could bring girls over, uh-huh. <laughs> both of them, <laughs> and they both could bring girls over. I never brought a guy over my house, like literally. Was it a rule like you couldn't, or you just felt like you they probably wouldn't want that to happen? Both. Okay. They probably they probably didn't want that to happen. They'd be like, oh. A man over here is different than a woman over here. I don't know. I don't know the mindset that they have. But, uh-huh. I mean, I'm not mad about it. Uh-huh. I feel like it, like, made me who I am today, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, they get way more leniency. Okay. Now, you ha- you also are a fresh new auntie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, I ain't going to point no fingers, but... Happened. Somebody had girls over. Mm-hmm. Somebody had girls over. Somebody uh, has a child, and somebody does not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what I'm talking about. Goodness. I told the cause and effect. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. That's cause and effect. Okay. Okay. You see, um, I don't plan on having kids no time soon. Uh huh. But just saying that didn't happen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just, I'm just saying. You know, you just can see where it's all, you can see how it all ties together. That's all. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, there is this, um, kind of viral interview going on right now, um, on Club Shay Shay and he brought comedian Gary on. He's the white, um, yeah. com- okay. So he went on and just talked about his estranged relationship with his kids. He has mm-hmm. kids from his first marriage. Um, and he said he hasn't spoken with his kids in the last three years. They're adults now. Mm -hmm. And now he has two sets of twins in a new relationship. And he, he he just, he's, I guess he just had questions prompted to him to speak about, uh, just not being able to not talk to his kids. Mm -hmm. And so it was posted a clip from the episode was posted online. Uh, you go find it yourself. And, uh, it went viral and it has people just talking about like the difficulty, the difficult relationship he has with his kids, the, the adults mm-hmm. and him not being able to build a relationship with them anymore um, has more to do with the kids and it has more to do with the mother. And people are saying like, they feel like the mom can help smooth out things. And they also feel like the kids are grown. And so they need to just get over whatever issues they have with their dad from whatever decisions he made in that, that past marriage. So mm-hmm. Gary Owens was a serial che- cheater. God. <laughs> he was a serial, che- serial mm-hmm. cheater towards their mother. And just basing off of your own experience with your parents, mm-hmm. whatever you feel like you've learned or seen your parents do to each other, do you feel like, whatever they did had some type of effect of how you view that individual parent? Or do you feel like um, whatever you've learned about your parents never dictated how you view them? Like that's still my mom Mm -hmm. and my dad. And I love them the exact same way, regardless of what they have done in their own personal lives outside of me. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you feel? Um, I feel like I still see them like as my parents, like Mm -hmm. I don't really judge them based off that, type of thing Mm -hmm. it was like a weird dynamic in the household like Mm -hmm. I don't feel like um I know that sometimes I just felt like it wasn't really my business to Mm -hmm. be honest um but we never really we never really saw it if that Mm -hmm. makes sense like it was always something in the background Mm -hmm. but it was never like brought up to us like as a family meeting or anything like that Mm -hmm. um so yeah okay so do you think that things could have been different on how you view your individual parents if you would have seen the stuff that you're hearing them do? Um, yeah. Yeah. I do. Okay. Now, it was a... How, how detailed can we get? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't put that on You ain't let me know. In regards to um, what? Uh, what you taught... You, you told me in college about your brother. Your other brother. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my Lord. 
I don't know about that. Okay. Okay, we ain't got to. Because I already know. That's just too much. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't feel like dealing with you. You're going to have to come on along with me if I got to deal with some shit like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It was okay. Just, maybe another time. Yes, maybe yes, another yes. Time. We need maybe like a, time. a host. That's like literally a host. Two hours in itself. Okay. Well, <laughs> without naming any names, um, I come from um mm-hmm. parents that did things in their yeah. personal lives, right? Mm-hmm. And it resulted in kids from other relationships. Mm-hmm. And I'm the oldest of all my father's kids mm-hmm. that I know of. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh my mom she always like spoke good about my father to me she always mm. promoted having a good relationship with him you mm-hmm. know get over things work things out with your daddy she always was like that mm-hmm. and so when i saw that this was trending with gary owens and his kids mm-hmm. saw so many people in the comments saying like the mom can help smooth things out well or she probably was manipulating them to, to be this way towards the father yeah have you seen or know of any relationships where there are there's a bitter parent and that parent is trying to manipulate the kid to view that other parent a different way? Have you ever seen that? No, I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. Mm-hmm. Is it like when the you know people be having you no know, baby mom, baby dad drama? Yeah. Is it like when the baby mom be like, "Oh, your dad don't love you. He said he don't want to come see you." Like stuff like that. Yeah, it could be stuff like that. Yeah. No, I haven't seen that, mm-hmm. but I'm aware of it. Mm-hmm. Like people putting up with their business out here. Yeah. So for you to be aware that those type of things do happen, and they happen often. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Me, personally, I ain't never seen it. <laughs> I've never seen it. And I come from a whole, both sides. Yeah. Single parent households. Mm-hmm. I've never seen the bitter parent try to manipulate their kids and just speak so bad and ill on the other parent. Yeah, I've that. never seen it. And my mama is totally not like that. She encouraged me to be with that piece of shit. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, don't, sometimes, I don't know about all that. Sometimes moms are delusional. Uh-huh. And sometimes they just have to be to get through life. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, where'd that come from? <laughs> sometimes moms are just delusional. That's all. Sometimes they just put up with the stuff because. It, I think everything just really comes together when you have kids with somebody. Uh-huh. I feel like that's really what keeps people together. Mm-hmm. Like trying to make sure that you have this stable household that you're not trying to like, even though they already like fucked up the stereotype, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. Like they trying to like make it seem like everything is okay. Yeah. And they going to put themselves through hell just to make that image stick. Got you. Got you. Um, is that something that you like, have pressures with because you come from a two-parent household and your, mm-hmm. and your parents stand together no matter what mm-hmm. so now that you think when it comes to you having your own families do you feel like you have that pressure to do that same thing like regardless of anything i gotta keep my family together i need my kids to grow up in a two-parent household <laughs> no no okay no, i don't i'm like <laughs> i'm like i feel like i've grown a lot and like my patience has been less mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, I'm not the type that if somebody cheat on me, I'm going to stay. Mm-hmm. I just can't stay where I'm not happy because I'm going to always make it known that I'm not happy. I'm never going to be like, oh, it's okay. I'm not bothered. I'm always going to be bothered by it. Mm-hmm. So it's really no reason for us to stay together because you're going to continue to hear me complain. And okay. you're going to continue to hear me nag. Like, okay. I'm always going to be mad. <laughs> so <laughs> okay. you might as well, like, it's not going to work. Okay. It's just not going to work. I'm always going to bring it up. Oh, with the other girl at? Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> I'm always gonna be mad, so it's just not gonna work. I don't. I don't let things go. I still have grudges from 2021. Mm-hmm. I still have grudges from 2018. I don't let shit go. And if you felt like I wasn't good enough for you, so you could stay here with me and your child, I don't see why we need to stay together. Mm-hmm. Um, we probably can, you know, do like you can see him on the weekends or something. But <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not staying. I can't do it. Okay. My pride won't let me do that. Okay. Knowing that somebody dogging me out and I'm sitting here like, oh, it's going to be fine. I know it's not going to be fine. I know this is going to like weigh on me mentally. Mm-hmm. So I'm not doing that. Okay. <laughs> um, let's, let, let's talk about how we know each other. <laughs> now, <laughs> me and I even, we met in college. She saw such a cool cat on campus, you know, and she was like, who's that? Very, very much. I need to get to know her. And she looks very cool. And then, boom, we became best friends in college. (laughs) 
That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you was the most relatable on the team. On the basketball team? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You remember the day that we met each other? Um, yeah. You mean the dorms? Yeah. 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 You had yeah. your half up, half down. I remember. My mm-hmm. half up, half down? Yep. We had on, it was a blue, like one of them little ugly blue shirts. It was like blue little cutoff shirt, navy blue. And then you had on khaki pants. I think you had on them ugly Sperry's too. But <laughs> that's all I remember. First of all, don't call those Sperry's ugly because <laughs> when you had a job interview, you definitely asked to wear those Sperry's to the job interview. I didn't get the job. It's not because of them <laughs> Sperry's. It's not because of those Sperry's. <laughs> yes, I remember. It was okay. cool. Uh, it was the job interview, uh, interview to beggars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't come on my shoes. <laughs> Um, I want to also talk about why you couldn't, you didn't connect with other people on campus, regardless of just the team, just, mm-hmm. just the whole campus body. You ain't really have friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was your only friend on campus. Mm-hmm. Why do you feel like you couldn't connect with other people? I feel like, um, I judged too much. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, th- I, th- I was judging people way too much. Okay. I'm just like. I just didn't feel like these people had anything in common with me to be on like the way they was moving and stuff like that. The way they acted, the way they was forcing blackness. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't really, I didn't really relate. Uh, I just felt like you was the only person I could relate to, even on the basketball team. Like <laughs> I didn't really relate to nobody on the team, but you, if that makes sense. <clears throat> if you want me to go in detail. <laughs> yeah. What, what about me? Cause you had to get to know me to know if you could relate to me. You ain't. I don't know. You just, I don't know. You wasn't so whitewashed. <laughs> <laughs> so I come, I came from, I didn't live in no white city. Uh-huh. I came, I went to school out West. Mm-hmm. Like I went to school in Chicago. There was no other race in my school, but black. Yeah. The other people that we was around, they, they were used to these diverse settings, which is why they had, many different friends with different diversities. Mm-hmm. But I didn't feel comfortable with those diversities because I didn't feel like they had anything, like we couldn't relate in a certain type of way. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the biggest thing. And even when people were black and they went there, they were black, but they came from like white crowds. Okay. makes sense. Okay. Now I, I, I came from cities that was pretty multicultural. No, it wasn't like large cities. I Hammond? came from some... Hammond is... A bunch of different Gary? No, I'm not from Gary. Oh. Don't do that. Don't put that on me. <laughs> I'm not from Gary. <laughs> Michigan City and uh, Hammond. Uh, okay. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I, was like, I don't remember no white from being in Gary. <laughs> yeah. White people, Hispanics and mm-hmm. black people. That's pretty much where I come from. Yeah, but you had those other friends too. Yeah. Great. I'm black. I'm black as hell. You but... was black, but you still was used to them people. Yeah. 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 And so do you feel like that that's probably did you a disservice to not grow up around other ethnicities? Yeah, it did. Okay. But I don't know. I just love black people. So I didn't really like I never be like, oh, I wish I would grew up around different diversities. I know eventually due to my career I was gonna come in contact with those different diversities. It was just I don't college is just I have a lot to say about college. Yeah, we're okay. going to get into college. Because college <laughs> it, it was, it was too an much. interesting place for you. It was an interesting place. It was too much. When I look back, I regret a lot of things. There's a lot of things I shouldn't have did. There's a lot of people I shouldn't have gave my time to. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. I don't, okay. even, I don't even like thinking about college because I didn't like the person I was when I was in college. Okay. It was, I didn't like it. I hated college. <laughs> if you had to describe the person that you was in college in five Adjectives. What mm. would those five adjectives be? Childish, naive. I was too clingy. I was too emotional. How many words is that? <laughs> Four. I was too emotional. Um, I was delusional. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Damn. I hate. <laughs> I hate how I was. I hate the person I was in college. I, I knew once I graduated. I mean, even my my last year, I wasn't that bad. My last year of college, like twenty twenty one, twenty twenty, but. Before that, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020 wasn't that bad. Okay. So I seen a year. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't that bad when COVID, all that stuff hit. But before that, I don't even like thinking about it. Like, I don't even like looking at memories from college. I hate I hate who I was in college <laughs> because I was coming out of high school with no experience and nothing. Uh-huh. 
So that, I think that's my high school experience is what, like, transitioned to college. Okay. Now, do you feel like I was trying to get you to see that while we was in college? Like, if, it just seems like you was always against trying new things all the time. Mm -hmm. It was always, ugh, no. Like what? Give me an example. Food. Oh, no. You see me eating squash and fucking oh, the, yeah. the calf. You're like, what the fuck? Ugh. You know, that was still nasty. It could be nasty, but you've never fucking tried it and you saying ugh to it. I tried it. <laughs> squash? You could have said any other. You could say greens at like, least. <laughs> I, yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Always, you would watch the same movies over and I over. Still, <laughs> I still do. I mean, I watch a lot of movies, but I don't watch movies anymore. But I, I get what you mean, though. Replay the same games. You can't say nothing about games. I can't play other games like 2K and Call of Duty because it's too many tryhards on them games. So that's actually not fair you will, for the game. You will part. replay, was it Left 4 Dead? Yeah. I still play how Left 4 Dead. Exactly. How many times are you going to replay the same game? When you just enjoy the game in itself and playing video games, you don't think about, you You like one of those, you know, think too much about the gamers. You know, you don't like to have fun. I do. When you, <laughs> I play Warzone every day. Oh, fun. that's not fun. It is fun. A bunch of ranked people that's trying to, mm -mm, that's too much. Okay. <laughs> now, when do you feel like, like, what moment did you have this sense of self-reflection on the person that you once was in college? Because the past... Two, three years. Two, three years. We was like, Dale, that girl's crazy. I don't say crazy. Okay. You use the <laughs> word delusional. Delusional is different than crazy. Okay. okay. I think I'm still that, so I'm okay. not saying that. <laughs> but you say you think you are still that? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. okay. But, I, but it's like a, a, a diet version. A diet version of I crazy. think I was worse in college. Yeah. yeah I think yeah. I had this self-reflection like uh, 2022, 2023. Okay. I wouldn't even say 2021 because that's going into like the fall of 2021. I feel like I was still doing nonsense in the fall of 2021. Mm -hmm. So after that. Did something have to happen in your life for you to have <laughs> this reflection on your past self? No. Okay. I just, I'm always alone. So I self-reflect a lot. Mm -hmm. I started like journaling, things like that, just to see where I can be better as a person. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that really helped. Are you, I ain't even gonna hold you, girl. <laughs> you was a piece of work in college <laughs> You was really fucking hard To be a best friend to I agree <laughs> All those You gotta start You gotta have You can't just go all around You know you gotta start you Start at the beginning yeah, What do you ahead. Start at the beginning Yes Okay So meeting you Freshman year of college Freshman you, year was fun Freshman year, it was fun. It mm -hmm. was fun. You had more fun than me, but it was fun. Yeah, we was together all the, the time. You, yeah, you also had your little flings with the boys. Um. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't really do all of that, but that one little mistake, you know. But other than that, I was chilling. One? Okay. Yes. <laughs> but, okay. yes. Um, first of all, all right, the flings with the... Any boy I talk to in college, I regret talking to. Cause I look back and I'd be like, they was the most corny ass niggas ever. Uh -huh. Like, and I didn't even understand. Like, I still can't get why I was so delusional. I just felt like because in high school I only had one relationship. Yeah. Like one experience with love. Yeah. Which was abusive. Yeah. So it was like I have just that one experience with the same person for four years. I didn't experience different men. Yeah. Like I wasn't really focused on men really like that. Like yeah. I was in a relationship, but. But it wasn't really like my main focus. Like I was focused on getting into school. That's why I didn't even have sex in high school. Mm -hmm. I was so afraid to get pregnant, like a teen pregnancy. So I was like really focused on school and like getting into nursing school. Mm -hmm. So when I came into college, I just felt like I was too free. Yeah, <laughs> if that makes sense. I, I didn't have any doing freedom. Things. Yeah, I didn't have any freedom in high school. I didn't. I couldn't go out with my friends. I couldn't mm -hmm. go to no juke parties. I didn't do none of that. So, so you wanted to go to juke parties? I could. I wouldn't. Not out west. No. <laughs> <laughs> so did, how do you know if you couldn't do it if you ain't never did you ever ask like i asked when i was like you know how people it was like eighth grade yeah people had yeah i never went to that did you ask yes and they said nah yes my parents were not i want to say they okay. were strict but they weren't dumb okay okay <laughs> so yeah no do you I, feel like you missed out with not going being able to go to those parties no okay no, okay. I, but I think I was fine. So I mean, you, I wasn't, I was literally doing, I wasn't no, like, that type of kid, though. Like, I was, I was watching anime. Yeah. <laughs> I was, like, 
I was the manager for my brother Jerk Crew. You know, he used to jerk. Mm-hmm. I used to like record, upload to YouTube. I wasn't really into all that. I was into like media stuff. I remember you showing like old hip rolling videos and on YouTube. Rolling? Not you, but like ah. you used to watch. Oh, that I like stuff. him. Yeah, uh, yeah. I got into that in, like 2012 though, like when I was going to go to high school. So yeah, some type of interest in it. Yeah, but I just. I knew I was never going to be able to go <laughs> in those type of settings. Uh-huh. I was too young. Okay. I felt like I was too young. Okay. Did you, do you feel like you lived through your brother? My like, brother? Yeah, like the stuff that he would like be more active outside and shit with his friends. You feel like you lived through your brother? I feel like I gravitated more towards his grade. Okay. <laughs> like I was in eighth grade. I, like I don't talk to nobody from elementary school. Mm-hmm. I talked to, when I was in elementary school, I wasn't really talking to people in my class. I was talking to like people below me because mm-hmm. that's who my brother talked to, and that's who I hung out with a lot. I hung out, I hung out with my brothers a lot, and it kind of shows in like certain aspects of my life that I, I've been around boys most of my life, mm-hmm. as opposed to having sisters. I don't have any sisters, mm-hmm. and I feel like that is a big impact on who I am and what I'm interested in, mm-hmm. as opposed to what my friends are interested in because mm-hmm. they have all have sisters. When I talk about YouTube, when I talk about game plays, when I talk about Xbox, they be like, I never had an Xbox. I, I was like, I don't know the type of childhood you had. They like talk about stuff like that. It be that's a lot. A lot of like family dynamics that they don't really understand, to be honest. Yeah, I think that all your baba kids socially are similar to yeah. each other. Mm-hmm. Would you say that you're socially awkward? Yeah, we all are. Okay. How can y'all all equally be socially awkward? Exactly. Like, not That's one crazy. person is, uh, no. it gotta be something with the household, how y'all was raised, <laughs> then. It gotta be I something. Can't, I don't know how to describe it. It's like, we're all socially awkward, but we all express ourselves emotionally, like, the exact same. Mm-hmm. Like, me, my brothers, we were all sense body a paragraph. Mm-hmm. We were all, like, speak how we feel. Like, we would all be like, why don't you have the sense to know that this is how I feel? Mm-hmm. And I've seen it in every situation. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Okay. I don't know. We just, even if we get into crowded places, we don't, my brother be like, I don't like people. Kobe, he just put his headphones in. He don't say nothing. Like, we don't really talk. Mm-hmm. Um, even when we, like, if I fool wrong, my brother expect me to talk. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> like, I'm not the person to do that because his girlfriend is more outspoken. Yeah. So she's the type of like, oh, our food's wrong. I'm not going to say nothing. Yeah. So we can't all be awkward yeah. <laughs> in this situation. Somebody going to have to come out the shell. Yeah. And it never works. We just all sit there mm-hmm. <laughs> and look at each other. So, yeah, I don't know why we all like that, to be honest. <laughs> maybe maybe because we didn't go out. <laughs> maybe because we, <laughs> okay. we didn't go to parties. Uh-huh. I think that's really what it is, to be honest. <laughs> now, that's part of the reason why it was hard being your best friend. Because one of the things that people would always ask <clears throat> is, what's wrong with your friend? Why she like that? And I'm just like, ain't nothing wrong with it. She, you just got to get to know her a little bit. You know, she just like that. She just like that, you know? And I also feel like I could have been maybe a crutch to you because I didn't challenge you enough to go push a, put yourself out there. Instead, mm-hmm. I would take lead on a lot of, like, talking yeah. for stuff. And I would talk for you way more than I probably should. Mm-hmm. It should have just said, you go ask her instead mm-hmm. of asking me. And if they actually do try to do it, see how you would respond to them trying to get to know you a bit more, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like I was a crutch to you uh, in a lot of other areas too, but maybe we might get there. I don't know. We'll see how, how time <laughs> how time goes for us in this episode. But uh-huh. I want to talk about the, your infamous poster. That was not me. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody one somebody. day... Decided to go through the hallways of a resident hall in college and post a bunch of papers on the wall and said, "So and so, I don't even know, I is a, what uh, be playing with girls' hearts or something like that, and should it be trusted? Something like that, Impress- right? Impressive. And no, and everybody <coughs> thought it was you that posted these notes all over the walls in the residence hall." No proof, just thoughts. Just thoughts, no proof. <laughs> That's all I see. <laughs> That's all I hear. <laughs> was it me? I don't know. Okay, okay. We could we could talk about it, like relate to it. Like, what you want to talk about? <laughs> 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 what you want to talk about? Now, if <clears throat> you had to get into the mind frame of that person and uh-huh. why you think they probably did that, why you think they 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 spent they hard on earned 
uh, student life money <laughs> on printing out all of these sheets of paper and taking the time to post it on the walls or the residence hall. Why do you think that they need? They felt like they needed to do that. Uh, acting with emotion. Acting with emotion. Okay. Feeling unhinged. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> acting with emotion. That's really what it is. Um, acting with emotion, not thinking with logic. Like, oh, what could be the consequence of doing this? Uh huh. But not really caring about the consequences. Okay. Just trying to get their point across. Like, yeah, this is what needed to be done. What do you think that that person thought would have happened because of doing this that would have benefited them? Maybe that that person that they made the flyers about felt the same embarrassment that they made that person feel. Got you. Okay. Okay. The same feeling of being small. Mm. Do you think that after that person realized that that other person, the flyers didn't work in that way for them? Do you think that... uh, It worked. Huh? It worked. It worked? Okay. From what I heard. Okay. (laughs) Okay. It worked. So that made, did that make that person that put the flyers up feel better that it worked? Yeah. Okay. I I ain't got no issues with that. <laughs> I ain't got no issues with it. As long as, long as you know, you, the person feels like they benefit from it. It wasn't a waste of their time and hard on student life money. <laughs> you said talking about what thirty dollars, please? Okay, a cent, a print. <laughs> Like okay. her hard earned student <coughs> life buddy, then I don't, I don't care either. It's cool. Moving on from that. No, should have went more into that. What do you feel like was some high points of college for you? Some things that you're proud of. Um, it could not all be bad. Um, uh, basketball. What about basketball? Just the triple double. Okay, that's all. This triple double. Ba- basketball is a very touchy topic. Why do you I have, say I have so? a lot to say about that basketball. I, I have a lot to say about basketball. Do say. Do okay, say. We can, like going to that then. <laughs> okay. Now, we uh, both played on the basketball team together. Yeah. We were pretty much the big girls on the team. Mm-hmm. Um, you got injured your freshman year of college. Yeah. You tore your MCL? ACL. ACL. Mm-hmm. Tore your ACL, was out for like a year and a half. Yeah. When you came back, you was in the starting lineup, do your thing. Mm-hmm. What 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 are some of your takeaways from your time playing basketball in Dominican? I hate it. <laughs> I did a lot of self reflection. I did not like playing basketball in Dominican. I just did it to be a part of something. Mm-hmm. Um, because you played, and I just feel like if I quit, what would I be doing? Like, what would I do? Mm-hmm. Like that's all that that was really like my main focus going into college was like playing basketball. Yeah, I don't even know what I would be doing if I didn't play basketball in college. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't like the pressure of it. I didn't like being feeling nervous. I didn't like like dealing with all these different personalities. I didn't like dealing with egos. I just didn't like it. I didn't like dealing with the first coach. Second coach was a little bit more bearable, but okay. the first coach. Oh. Terrible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I hated uh, it. We had an episode where we talked about the first coach, but we had lost the footage, so it didn't air. God damn it. Who, who was in this episode? Uh, Ari. <laughs> I know she was leaned up on this. I know she was leaned up on this couch. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Lord. Oh pretty much. God. Long story <laughs> short, fuck that lady was what was pretty, pretty much said oh, about her. Yeah, she... Uh, but... I think I want to move past that lady. It ain't mm-hmm. much words I got to say about her. I really care about your opinion of the second coach. Well, you give yours first. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel like y'all was, cl- was y'all closer than me. I don't know. I, feel I don't like- know what we were. I thought we was cool, <laughs> but I think she was a little selfish. More selfish than I didn't. Than Maybe she was I, like trying to ring Chase or something, you know? Yeah, I feel like she was trying to do more than what that team was capable of doing mm-hmm. and was putting a lot of pressure, unnecessary pressures on me to, um, to perform yeah. on a certain level that I just wasn't physically able to do when I got injured. Mm-hmm. Um, so long story short, I bruised the tendon in my toe to the point mm-hmm. where I couldn't fucking run. I had to overly wrap my toes to not feel the pain of my foot lying against the ground. Yeah. And so I was playing injured my junior year and pretty much my senior year. I just wasn't, I wasn't as injured as I was my junior year and my senior year, but I mm-hmm. was still injured because I never recovered from it. 
uh, and I vocalized to the coach Mm -hmm. that I would like to sit out for the rest of my junior season when I injured it, especially with knowing that I had some Hayden as teammates on the team. Exactly. Feeling as if that they deserve your sacrifice. (laughs) (laughs) That that they deserve to breathe the same air as me on this basketball court. Uh, And she was like, let's sleep on it. You know, man, I think you could push through it, T. (laughs) And so I pushed through it. And um, that led to me being very unfulfilled. Yeah. Uh, So I guess I would say that I don't think she had my best interests with doing that mm. and just knowing that she did leave as soon as we graduated. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. As soon as we graduated and didn't want to, cause she said that when she came to Dominican, she was going to bring a ring here <laughs> cause she comes from a winning culture that mm-hmm. did not happen with mm-hmm. us. And so I think that she was like, all right, let me get the fuck up out of here before her record gets ruined. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? What is your opinion of her? Is it the exact same? I don't know, the exact same. I don't know. I didn't like basketball. <laughs> they they just made me not like basketball. At Who's all. they? The coaches. Okay. I like basketball in high school. Like that was like literally my life in high school. Mm-hmm. Then I came to college. I don't know. I just didn't feel supported through my injury. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't feel supported like when I first got there either. Like I don't know. I just didn't feel supported. Yeah. In the beginning, especially during my injury, when I even after I healed on my injury, like after my injury, I feel like she didn't believe in me as a player, mm-hmm. which is why I was happy. <laughs> we got a new coach who I feel like can, so it's like a fresh new set of eyes that can see my potential. Yeah, because I think you know the other lady, she was too stuck in what I used to be and not what I am right now. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so yeah, I just mixed feelings. It just it depended on the time of the season. Like they did like weird. They gave out weird rewards, mm-hmm. weird MVPs. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was sometimes like weird energy. He was playing favoritism sometimes. So mm-hmm. I don't know. She was our. She was. She was something. <laughs> no. I can't really describe. She was. It was. That's too much. There was too much going on. No, I want to ask you. Do you feel like you was the best support system? No. Do you feel like I was uh, a support system for you when it came to basketball? I feel like it was hard on me. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that's what pushed me. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's still like a form of support. Mm-hmm. But that's would you say that that's probably not the support you wanted or needed, whichever mm-hmm. one you want, how you want to take it? No, I think I needed that push, okay. to be honest. Um, like, emotional-wise, like, I felt like like tearing your ACL is just terrible. Like, mm-hmm. I had to learn how to walk all over again. I had to learn how to, like, bend my knees it was terrible. I had to learn how to run all over again. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still feel like you were there for me emotionally. Um, but you had your own thing going on. Like, you was focused on being the best player you can be mm-hmm. while I was out. So I wasn't going to fault you for your focuses. Like, this is, like, you're a basketball player. Like, that's what you're going to be focused on. You're not going to be so focused on me mm-hmm. soaking in my own injury. Mm-hmm. So I feel like you did what you need to do at the time. Like, you balanced it as best as you could. That's what I can say. Do you feel like you was the best support for me when it came to basketball? No. What do you feel like you probably dropped the ball? No. I don't think – I always supported you and your accomplishments, I feel like. Mm-hmm. But, like, standing up for you, mm-hmm. I probably didn't do as good as I could with that. But it's just like I wasn't that type of person to really speak up. I'm mm-hmm. still not the type – I'm still trying to get that. Well, I've been way better with that. Mm-hmm. But I would, like, avoid conflict. And just, like, you know how I used to, you know, sit at separate tables and stuff? Mm-hmm. So, like, I would go sit with you, but if somebody says something about you, I just don't feel like arguing. Like, I just come back and tell you what they said. Mm-hmm. Even when we were scrimmaging and somebody said something, like, oh, this is what she said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I feel like I feel like you were more of that person that would, like, talk. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't really the talker. But mm-hmm. I never really, if they were like, oh, yeah, Tamaya, she does a ball hog. I mean, a lot of people heard that, though, when somebody said that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, a lot of people, like, that, that was something that was going on during the game. Mm-hmm. So, it's like, what could I say if I'm people, sitting? People were saying that during games, like, that I'm ball hogging? Yeah, so it's like, that's, that's not something <laughs> I could, like, defend you on. It's like, mm-hmm. this is what she was saying. That's what I told you. Like, this is what she was saying during the game. Like, she's not passing the ball. Mm-hmm. But it's like, we're not going to argue with that. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah, they definitely were saying that. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know pass that. The ball. Pass the damn ball. I was just be like. So, 
how am I not hearing this happen on the court? Like, She's literally saying it. I don't know how you're not hearing it. Maybe you're too locked in. Locked the, the fuck in. Yeah, so that we can win this game. Literally, when I'm on the bench, <laughs> when she's, I'm subbed out. Yeah. And they are, I'm sitting to seeing somebody on the three point line, uh-huh. and you have the ball, and you just, you know, ISO. Mm-hmm. You go and take the ball yourself. She don't, didn't I just say she don't pass the damn ball? Mm-hmm. Turn to the bench and say that. Mm-hmm. That's what they say. Like, <laughs> what did I say at that point? Nobody ever had a conversation with me about me not passing the ball. Of though. course not. Cause Coaches, I mean, spectators, <laughs> teammates, nobody ever came to me and said, I don't pass the ball enough. Exactly. Because they don't mind you having the ball. Yeah. Because <laughs> you were probably one of the most efficient scorers. Like, I was. Exactly. I was. So <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't really see the complaint. I mean, <laughs> you're more likely to score if you go to the basket than somebody else to shoot a three. We didn't have no, we pro, no, we didn't have no elite yeah. three-point shooters on the team. We yeah. just didn't. We had, oh, damn, that was lucky. Thank God. Uh-huh. That's what we had on the team. <laughs> like, oh, thank God. Finally. Shit, that's what the type of three-point shooters we had. Finally. Damn. Yeah. Finally made one for once. Shit. <laughs> that's how I felt. <laughs> Shit. I don't know. No, that's what it I was. I never felt like somebody, maybe, mm, maybe, I don't know. I never felt like, I never felt the, the urge to do like this when somebody shot. <laughs> I, I never felt the urge to be like, I just never felt that urge. I used to be like, damn. <laughs> I used to be like, damn, please. <laughs> Please hit it. Man, I <laughs> this hate time. Play, I hate playing on that fucking team, man. I hate playing and they had to do a lot with the coaches, but more so the teammates. The teammates more than the coaches. It was just too much it was too too much drama. I don't really like drama. I just, you know. No. Not team based. I don't like I feel like as a team a team do better when everybody likes each other, obviously. Mm-hmm. So that's why I didn't really I'm just like, this is so like, it was just a bunch of stupid shit. Like Looking back on up? things, I'm grateful that I was not there in real time to soak up people talking crap about me because they even talk back in practice. If huh? you don't, if you didn't hear them talk back to you in practice, oh. yeah, you probably didn't. No, oh. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's like most of the time when people say something about you. Like only it's only been like one time when we was like in the dining hall and somebody was like, "Yeah, I just feel like this is what time I said," and then I'll come back to you and say, "But I wouldn't say nothing to that person." But most of the time, they said it was when we were all together. So maybe I thought that you were like, oh, I heard that, but they're not going to do shit about it. You know what I mean? Like, I thought you yeah, heard it, but no. was ignoring it. Like, I've, I don't, I've never heard any of the stuff that, well, that in you practice, come back and would tell me. In practice, they would talk back. Yeah, that, that, that's wild. I've never, I never picked up on any of those things. Like, I hear a lot of I can see a whole hater, and you'll come back and you tell me stuff, but I never heard it in real time to address it myself. And more so, it would always just be me calling them out. Like, I remember vividly one time we, we had, like, a conditioning practice. Yeah. And I had told Stephanie, because mm-hmm. she had made us, she had missed her time on us doing back and forth. And I was, like, pretty much, like, hey, make this shit next time, because yes, ain't no reason why you shouldn't make this time. <laughs> and she ain't like, I feel like she ain't like me ever since I called her out. No, because she said something about it. Oh, uh, okay. That same time. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, she I'm said thinking, so. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. You hearing this, and I'm thinking that you're not caring. So I'm just uh-huh. like, okay, let me. I'm like, maybe she heard that. Maybe she didn't, but she said it pretty loud. So that's yeah. why I never really like made the big deal. I wasn't really the leader of the team. I didn't really like to talk. I'm just like, I'm just here to just play uh-huh. basketball. But she was just, she was like. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, I'm just saying. I appreciate that I didn't hear the stuff and I didn't know I the stuff it was better because if you did. I would have. <laughs> it would have been a, a scene. Because when me. you said no, you I, you heard it. What? I feel like you heard it. You heard something, but you didn't make out what it was. So you was mm-hmm. like, huh? Yeah. But then they they say nothing after that. That's basically what it was. So it's just like, okay, why would I keep bringing it up to you, make you mad, even more mad? Nah. Unless nah. it was out of pocket. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Cause it's like when every when anytime somebody got something to say about Naima, I'm there to defend her or shut some shit down. Mm-hmm. And whenever you would come back to me about some shit, some other hoe that said about me, mm-hmm. I'm like, well, what you do? Shit, I came to tell you. I'm like, all right. You ain't even pinched the bitch. Like you ain't. You ain't. What you want me to fight to be arguing with a group of people in the diner? I just can't do that. This is not me. Ideally, no, I wouldn't have wanted that. But like some type of defense would have been enough for me because mm-hmm. I would I could take care of my own battles. But it's like yeah. something when I'm over here every day. What's wrong with your friend? Something you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I just think that 
outside of just friendships, when you uh-huh. now talk about being in a romantic relationship with somebody, or it's your, or you the older sibling, sibling is your younger uh, sibling. The differences that we all have about our, uh, ourselves are unique, and there's nothing wrong with being different. Mm-hmm. But acknowledging that those differences does affect the relationship that you try try to build with people. Yeah, because I would like people to defend me when I'm not around because mm-hmm. they can expect that to happen on my end. Yeah, so it sucks to know that you you you, you love somebody and they love you back, but they wouldn't defend you. At all, like mm-hmm. you, you, you ain't. I, there was moments where I was never defended in college, mm-hmm. in life, outside of just you. Just I'm just not defended, yeah, at all. So, uh, I'm. It, that's just something that I lack in all relationships. That I'm always down for other people, yeah, loud and doing shit for other people, mm-hmm. and I just don't get that back. So that is yeah. something that in relationships now that I'm older, like I gotta have that. I gotta make sure that you got my back. Yeah. And I would say that that's something that that's, we're going to get to like, you know, at the beginning of the episode, I called you my good friend, mm-hmm. but I didn't call you my best friend. Mm-hmm. That's part of the stuff that like took the best friend part out of the title for you, for me. Yeah. And we're going we, we, we to keep going. We're going to get, <laughs> we're going to get closer to, to that point. But yeah. like, what, uh, how do you feel? How do you feel about like, some of the low, low, low parts that you had in college. How do you feel like those things have affected you today now that you are past those times in college? In regards to what? I would like, it's like a lot of different, like, and what, like, what specifically? No. What area specifically? Because I had a lot of lows and a lot of different areas, if that makes sense. I ain't gonna, we ain't naming no names, you know. Oh, that girl that put the flyers up, she did her thing, but oh she my had gosh. <laughs> she had other moments with guys on campus uh-huh. that I feel like could have probably had a huge impact on how she operates with men today. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> would you say that the things that you were doing because you had more freedom in college with dating, um, you have some similarities in the things that you, you how you operate today with dating? No. Or are you completely different from that woman? Completely different. Okay. Okay. I used to feel like you couldn't be alone. Yeah. Like you just had to be underneath something. hmm I you, agree. Do you think that you still like that? No. Okay. Uh, what would you say to all the times that we have come together, mm-hmm. you, were, yeah, you were dealing with a guy. Yeah. You were never alone. You never, like, ever told me that she wasn't dealing with somebody. Mm-hmm. Why, what's the difference between that and what you, how you were in college where you were always with a nigga? Like, are you, are you like asking like, how can I, how am I able to be in my lonely now? Is that what you're asking? How are you able to be in your lonely now, but all the times that we have come together that you, yeah. you were dealing with a guy. Mm-hmm. So how are you like different from the girl that you was in college if you still <coughs> to this day be dealing with guys consistently? Like, obviously you're not going to never be like you could deal with a nigga if you want to. Like mm-hmm. dating, you could do whatever you want yeah. to do. But what what is totally different from then to now when it comes with dealing with <coughs> with guys and being able to be to yourself and not feel like you need to be associated with a with a romantic interest. Um. So like back then, I felt like I felt like <clears throat> I needed somebody to like feel this whole. That I felt like was missing, like I felt like I needed somebody always there to feel complete, mm-hmm. um, to feel like that I'm, I have somebody like romantically. Like that was something I like yearned for, especially with my experience in high school mm-hmm. of not like feeling loved at times. Mm-hmm. So, the like I was just searching for love, mm-hmm. <laughs> searching for love and not really finding it, like not really because I was rushing into it. So I wasn't really finding what I wanted. That's why I always came out disappointed. Mm-hmm. Um, so like for today. I don't, like I said, my patience back then was a lot because I'm like, oh, I don't want to be alone, so I'm going to be patient to what this person is doing. Mm-hmm. Like, I won't really fault them for what they're doing to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but now I don't have a lot of patience. And I hold people, like, accountable to these, like, I hold people accountable. If I feel a type of way, they can call it complaining. But I'm telling you, like, I literally write shit out for people, mm-hmm. for men. I write it out. This is what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm looking for. And when they don't do it, and I call them out on not doing it, 
then they act, tell me I'm complaining. Mm-hmm. When I'm literally writing shit out for you. Mm-hmm. It's the, it just don't get no more simple than that. Yeah. So I even <laughs> wrote a list. I kept track of everything this nigga did not do for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I showed him this list. And he was like, that's weird. I'm like, you read it though. And is anything I say in this list wrong? Mm-hmm. He said, no, but still, this is just weird. Mm-hmm. What is, why is it weird? Because I'm telling you about yourself? Yeah. How is that weird? Mm-hmm. I keep track of everything. I don't care. <laughs> and, like, for example, I was talking to somebody for two years. Yeah. I asked them. When we first started talking, I was like, oh, I like flowers. I didn't say too much of that. I just said, oh, I like flowers. Yeah. Hinting that you should buy me flowers. Yeah. Flowers are $12. Yeah. <laughs> Never got flowers. Two yeah. years. Never got flowers. Yeah. So I'm just like, <laughs> it took me two years. I was like, you know, I, I, at that point I was being patient. So I was just like, okay, I'm just trying to see. I kept hinting at it, like, yeah. flowers, flowers, flowers. And they never had a real, like, never had a real reason as to why he didn't give me these things. Mm-hmm. I asked most of the time, I said, how hard is it to go down the street to buy me $10 flowers? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, like, I can't do nothing with that. Mm-hmm. So I kind of distance myself from that person. I really don't talk to that person. Mm. If that person, that's not somebody, like, I would, like, pursue. Like, be like, oh, come lay with me. Like, shit like that. I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. Either you want to be in my life or you don't. But this is the same person. He keeps coming back. Yeah. Oh, I miss you. I, oh, I, let's have sex. We can have sex, but I'm still going to want flowers. <laughs> like, yeah. That's not that's not fulfilling for me anymore. That used to be something that fulfilled me just sex. Yeah, but I need more than that. Mm-hmm. That's not that sex was not that spectacular. Yeah, to, that's all you bring to the table. Like I need more. Now, Biddy would say that women don't know their worth because they don't have their fathers in their lives. Uh, what the hell? Yeah, in our relationships, being uh-huh. in abusive relationships. Mm-hmm. Letting niggas just use them and run them, run their cars through the ground. Yeah. All because they ain't had a daddy in their life. And if they had their father in their life, they would have known. That father would have taught them what real love is and how the man's <laughs> supposed to treat you. Are you kidding me? You had your daddy in life. Yes, I did. Where's the disconnect? Why do you feel like you was just searching for a void or you just wanted to be loved in college? Mm-hmm. Do you feel like your dad didn't serve that purpose? Um, he wasn't really affectionate. <laughs> okay. Like, I, I never really went to him for nothing, if that makes sense. Like, I talked to my mom more if I had personal problems, but I wouldn't go to my dad. Like, I wouldn't sit next to him like, oh, I'm having these boy problems. Like, I wouldn't even tell him I'm talking to anybody. Mm-hmm. Like, dating, nothing like that. Um, So maybe I was just looking for that affection that I didn't have from him, from, mm-hmm. like, a, another male, that mm-hmm. makes sense. Like, I was looking for that some type of male affection. Mm-hmm. But no, me and my dad don't really hug. We don't hug. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, we don't hug. We don't like, he doesn't talk to me. He'd be like, oh, is something wrong with you? If something's wrong with me, if he knows I'm mad about something, he's just not going to say nothing. He's mm-hmm. just going to like, he just be like, oh, I don't really say nothing when you're mad. I just let you be mad until you're not no more. Yeah. Like, so maybe that's what I was looking for. Like some male affection, like a male, somebody that was here to support me. Mm-hmm. I'm still looking for that. Do you, do you feel like that is that the same as seeing your parents be affectionate toward each other? Like seeing them holding each other's hand or going on dates or just kissing in mm-hmm. front of y'all? Is that the same type of affection that probably could have had some type of positive reinforcement or it was more so just being a, you and your dad sharing affection? The, me and dad. Because okay. I've seen them do those things like go on dates, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I've seen that part of like love. Okay. But it was just like the. Having like a male companion or somebody I could talk to that's male. I'm just used to talking to males because I have brothers. Yeah. So it's like I'm looking for that in my partner. And I was continuously looking for that like acceptance and that love and that support that the men were like emotionally ready to give. Mm-hmm. Where was your mom in all of this? Oh, yeah. I, I feel like our moms. Mm-hmm. They should be realistic with us when it comes to dating. And they yeah. should teach us the game on how their experiences went for them mm-hmm. and what to look out for when it's our turn to now go out there and dating. So, like, my mom ain't teach, us, teach me shit about dating. <laughs> she ain't teach me shit. Mm-hmm. But it seemed like she was going through it. 
when it came to my daddy. Yeah. I would, I think I would have thoroughly benefited from he- hearing like, what not to do? What not to do? Mm-hmm. What a womanizer looks like? Obviously, I don't date men, but yeah. that I think that those are the things that women, a mother, should do for their children, and mm-hmm. just, especially daughters. Like those are things that they could give game of. How you yeah. feel about that? I, I was the type of, like I said, when I was in college, I was kind of childish. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really listen. Even if she told me something, I'd be like, "You just nagging me." Okay. Like you just, I'm just like. You not understanding what I'm like going through. Like I kind of like brushed her off, kind of mm-hmm. like you don't really get what I'm going through. Like that's what I felt. Well, what were you going through? Okay. What I was going through. <laughs> a bunch of <laughs> bullshit. That's why a bunch of bullshit. Okay, it was a lot. You talking about specifically high school? Uh-uh. Okay, you talking about just college? Like yeah. in general, for college they supported me through that situation. Okay, like they both supported me through that situation, which is why I don't really like tolerate that no more. Like I was tolerant that, of course, I was in high school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I was, like, 15 to 18. It's not really the... But that's why I don't tolerate that no more. Like, I'm not the type of person, you know, if I'm... Since I was going through that in high school, that abusive relationship, mm-hmm. I'm not the type to look for that. Mm-hmm. That's something that... That's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like, I put my foot down with that. I haven't been through nothing like that recently with somebody I talked to. Yeah. So, like, thank God I got that lucky, but... So from the uh, some f- the age of you said fifteen to eighteen, yeah, so you were in an abusive relationship in high school. Yeah, physically abusive, emotionally both. abusive. Okay, mm-hmm. both. Uh, was it like the beginning of the relationship, or did it lead up to now this person is being vi- violent towards me? Um, uh, it's like it led up to it. Okay, so like probably a year in, a year into it, mm-hmm. so like sophomore year. Yeah. And what was going through your mind when he started to put his hands on you? Like, was this like a, what What did he say or have to do for you to not feel like you need to get out of the situation and it lasted for four years or three years? Mm, I don't know. Just felt like I was young. Yeah. And I was just like, he didn't mean it type of thing. Like, mm-hmm. I was just brushing it off. And I was scared to tell my parents. Mm-hmm. I was so scared to tell my parents. So I didn't really, like, that's the, that was also, that was the fear of telling my parents because I felt like that was going to be a whole thing. And they found out it was a whole thing. Yeah. So I was just afraid of that. Like, I was always afraid to speak up for myself um, and, like, speak up in general about anything that I felt. Like, I've came a long way um, with speaking about my emotions, telling people, like, this is how it is, like, I know for a fact that I wouldn't be going through nothing like that like today mm-hmm. because of how vocal I am and how much, like, how easy it is for me to cut people off. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it was that. Um, <laughs> now, you had a situation go down in college, and it was an act of violence done to mm-hmm. you by the hands of another man, a different man. Mm-hmm. Um. What is your perspective on just the violence that happens towards women from male perpetrators? Because we've spoken about this on the podcast mm-hmm. multiple times. And I recently had somebody tell me that it's, it seems like my viewpoints when it comes to holding people accountable based off the sex is more lopsided towards the guys where I hold, I give them more smoke. <laughs> and that's another conversation for another time. But, uh, it all stems from stats, and it all stems from being in the moment of pe- women being abused by the hands of men. And you are one of those few where I assisted or supported mm. because you were being abused by a man, mm. right? Uh, now, we don't got to get into detail if you don't want to, mm. but... You let me know how we can go with this situation. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, do we do we do we go, do we talk about what exactly happened, or do we just talk about how you felt when said situation happened to you? Let me see how I felt. Okay. I don't want to be so strange. Can we can <laughs> we can we speak to what 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 it was? Because abuse could be anything. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay. So it was a it was a time where we were both in the calf. We were supposed to meet 
to go to lunch together uh, on campus. Uh And you came and you were dressed in (laughs) some basketball shorts, slides, (laughs) And you had a gray hoodie on. Your hood was over your head. My bonnet. With your, with your, <laughs> with your pink and black bonnet. <laughs> and you had sat down, and you just wasn't really looking, giving eye contact, and you wasn't really talking. So I'm like, what's going on with you? Now, it's okay. You know, some of us, you don't really talk, but yeah. you talk to me. So <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and so I'm like, what's going on, man? What's wrong with you? So I'm going to be wrong with you. Like, nothing, nothing. And eventually, I got it. I, I I got it out of you that you said that somebody sexually assaulted you uh-huh. on campus. Mm-hmm. And I, at the time, was a, a mandated reporter, so yeah. I couldn't just listen to you right. say that to me and not do anything about it. I had mm-hmm. to report it. And so we went through the steps of reporting a sexual assault on campus through Title IX. So I want you to just go through... That whole process, like, how was that for you to have your best friend walk with you through that entire moment and just talk about like your healing from mm-hmm. from that uh, situation? Okay, <laughs> um, it was like a, a lot of self blame mm. from that situation. Like, I even to this day, I still think somewhat it's my fault, even if it, like the person cleared up that it wasn't. Um, it's still a lot of self blame. Like what I what could I have what could I have done different to avoid that situation? Um, but it all came down to me trusting that person mm-hmm. that I already knew or I already knew that I already like was already talking to like catching up with basically. Um, so that was a lot. So that's why I didn't really when you were talking about like I was first like walking up like I didn't really want to tell you because I didn't know I don't think that you would have blamed me for it mm-hmm. but I was just that was just the fear of being blamed like mm-hmm. maybe this situation isn't what I'm making it out to be yeah like I didn't want to feel like I was blowing it up more than what it was yeah um so it was a lot of self-blame um it was a lot of, like, like confusion because that never happened to me so it was a lot of confusion like so is this technically what that is yeah um so I was like really Really confused about that. It was like a lot of so like internal conflict. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know really how to deal with it. I didn't want to like be a vic- uh, enemy. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to be a victim. Also, yeah. want to be a victim. Um, I didn't want like people to be blaming me because once you say something like once that happens, like everybody's against you mm-hmm. at times, depending on who the guy is. Do you like, feel like people were against you when you reported this? Yeah. I didn't. A lot of people, like, since me and this person had, like, something years before that, like, a couple of years before that, yeah, they didn't think it was possible. But it's just, like, people are in relationships and they still get, you know. Sexually assaulted. Yes. Yeah. By their spouses. So yeah. it's just, like, me having some type of something, like, relationship with this person before shouldn't, like, dictate what you feel now. Yeah. If I felt violated then that should just be the emotion that, like, I shouldn't have to validate my emotions. Yeah. Like, this is how I feel. Yeah. This is how I felt in that moment. Um, it was really hard to heal. I mean, I was in therapy for, like, five years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was in therapy for a long time. But um, therapy did help me get through it, but I felt I still needed closure from that person. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got closure from that person. They explained, like, that wasn't their attention. What my my biggest fear for confronting this person was, um, was it your intention to hurt me? Yeah. Like, did you come visit me, intending to hurt me? Yeah. That was my biggest fear. Like, I was scared that they were gonna. I didn't know what the response was gonna be. Yeah. Um. So, that was like the biggest thing. And I never got an answer to. Like, did you do this on purpose? Like, is this is this your plan to do this? Things like that. Mm-hmm. Um. But I eventually got the answer. Um, so would you say going to you, your assaulter and confronting them about what they, what you perceive they did to you and then validated it, mm-hmm. do you feel like that, that is like what helped you really heal from not heal, but like in your help you get to a step closer of healing mm-hmm. from that, uh, situation? Yeah. 
Because I was just always, like, wondering. And I got tired of wondering. Yeah. Like, why did this person do this? Like, yeah. I never got, like, because after that situation, I didn't talk to that person for, like, three, four years. Mm-hmm. Like, I blocked them. I didn't yeah. talk to them. Even after that situation, like, I didn't reach out when I did the reporting thing. Mm-hmm. I didn't reach out. Did um, you ever talk to your parents about this? No. Would this, if they was to watch this episode, <laughs> would this be the first time they ever heard that you mm-hmm. were sexually assaulted? Yeah. That's just not something, I just don't, it's just like, that's certain things you just don't want to deal with. Yeah. And that's just, I just don't, I didn't want to deal with that. Yeah. Like that whole situation, like having to talk to them about it, like I just didn't want to deal with that. So. Now you, I had Carlos who went to Dominican, come, uh-huh. he was on the podcast mm-hmm. and he spoke about his experience with being sexually assaulted mm-hmm. and we Briefly talked about how I had did a documentary on campus with survivors of sexual assault. Yeah. And Carlos was in it. Mm -hmm. And you also were in it. Mm -hmm. And the things that you all said, because it was four people in that said that y'all are afraid to come to your mom and tell your mom about being sexually assaulted. Yeah. Why do you feel like you were, or currently probably still feel like you Mm. were afraid to tell your mom? (laughs) She's just dramatic. (laughs) (laughs) That's <laughs> just, just, I know it was a big situation, but it's just like, you know, parents make things like 10 times more complicated. Like sometimes you want to, like, you want to approach things a certain way to mm-hmm. help you heal, mm-hmm. but they want to do it a totally different way that you're not comfortable with. Yeah. And I just, I just know my mom. Yeah. I just know. So it's just like, I wanted to avoid that discomfort and just do what I know will help me. Yeah. Nothing that'll be blown up. Nothing that'll be taken out of proportion. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a traumatizing situation, but I wanted to deal with that on my own in my own way. I mm-hmm. didn't need anybody forcing me to do something I didn't want to do. Yeah. Like, making it 10 times more complicated. Looking back on things, do you feel like I forced you with moving forward with reporting against dude, or that was necessary? No, it was necessary. Uh, I was going to have to tell you anyway because you're the only person I talked to. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like eventually I was going to have to tell you like, what, what, you going to stop being a mandated reporter? No. I mean, I, I didn't feel comfortable telling anybody else and I just, I'm not the type to hold things in too long. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that was that. And then it was, I'm not going to say who, it was another male on campus. He, he actually stood up for me in that situation when another male was like, I just don't think that's what it was. I think she just being dramatic, like mm-hmm. speaking on me. Mm-hmm. And that person spoke up for me. So even though I don't like that person, <laughs> that like that that more. But yeah. at that point, they were like, they were there for me in that situation, which is why um, I was saying like I felt like people were blaming me. Yeah. And not really understanding my situation because when women get sexual sexually assaulted, men kind of brush it under the rug or they don't they don't take it that serious. Mm-hmm. Even other women don't take it that serious. They still blame women. Yeah. So it's just like, it's not, that's why I had to come to you. Like, I didn't know who else to go to. Um, sometimes women aren't our biggest support. So. Yeah. 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 It, it, that is true. Mm-hmm. Sometimes women don't support other women. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes when you learn about that woman that's not supporting other women, they have been abused. And yeah. nobody stood up for that woman. And so she probably has normalized that action that was done to her to mm. be what is right? Like, men can do this to me. Nobody yeah. said that it was wrong, even though it probably felt wrong to me. And so, what is done to other people, that's how I view it now. Yeah. If that's what society thinks, then I guess I think that way too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that it's very important for people to stand up for people when actions are done, injustice is done to them. And that's the only way that we can really collectively get people to decondition themselves from abuse. Because mm-hmm. I think that that is like, embedded in us that that is okay to do so because it has been proven that it is okay to abuse other people mm-hmm. um i did tell i had told my mom when i graduated college mm-hmm. on my ride back home that a cousin tried to assault me mm-hmm. when i was younger and she was upset <laughs> she was upset she was being dramatic but I made sure to tell her that I want to do it my way. So yeah. keep it to yourself. She was upset about yeah, she, she was the ups- person doing that. She was upset and she wanted to do whatever she wanted to do. And I'm just like, okay. this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I want to address that person myself. Right. I would like to handle this myself. But I felt like 
having the conversations with y'all and mm-hmm. doing that documentary, y'all are all like, while you're not behind this camera, you're also a survivor. And I just feel like I was different from y'all because the action wasn't completed. Yeah. And I too felt the same as y'all. Like I mm-hmm. was afraid or just was it like really pushed to want to tell my mom? Cause yeah. I know my mama. She's dramatic. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want her to cause hell. And, yeah. It's you know. just too much. <laughs> it's just really too much. <laughs> like, I don't know. Sometimes we just go through things in life that we have to deal with. I, I was, I don't feel like I was on my own. Like you were there to support me. Mm-hmm. Other people were there to support me, but sometimes you need friend support more than parental support. Mm-hmm. Like in that situation, I didn't really need parental support, or the support that your parents probably would have gave you. Don't you didn't probably need that type of support. Yeah, it was uh, too, head, too headstrong. Yeah, <laughs> too headstrong. Yeah. Now I was I was in a relationship when I was in college. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you weren't the fondest of that relationship. No. <laughs> what she also okay, wasn't the fondest you. <laughs> of our relationship, our best friendship. None of it's, it's too nice, but the, the most of the people that you were situated with did not like me. Uh-huh. Why do you think Except they they didn't nice like you when you talk to me? Nice. But yeah. the, the, my, <laughs> the other ones yeah, didn't like my, me. My baby, nice. Yeah. Yes. Now, what about why you don't think the other two didn't like you? I don't know. <laughs> you you don't know. <laughs> okay. First of all, <laughs> I'm trying to. I can't can I say names. No. You can say names, fuck them, I don't care. But I don't want to be mean like I'm bullying. You ain't bullying? Okay. This is your perspective, I ask you a question. I don't know, okay. Uh-huh. I don't know, I just feel like she just didn't like that our friendship that we were always together. You already told me that that's why she didn't like you. Like, she kind of complained that we were always together. Uh-huh. I feel like she wasn't looking at it as, like, a friendship. Uh-huh. She was looking at it like we're together. Were we? No. Okay. But I just feel like we were just so close, and then she just... Maybe she was like throwing off on how close we were. Cause I don't remember which year y'all like reconnected. Sophomore, junior. Yeah. Year and at that of. point, we were like kind of close. Mm-hmm. So I don't think she was like ready to see you that close to somebody else. Okay. Um, okay. And when I like, I don't know. Yeah. So you ain't, you ain't think our relationship, our friendship wasn't uh, inappropriate in any ways? <laughs> No. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. Inappropriate okay. is crazy. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. To this uh, day, like, you still think our our friendship wasn't inappropriate in any sort of way. We never did nothing. We never did anything. Right. Yeah. But I complimented you a lot. You did? But I didn't look at it though. I just compliment you like I compliment my under other friends. It's just the fact that you had a girlfriend that it made it seem weird to her. But I was just like, oh, you're so fine. But she was thinking like, oh, you saying my my girlfriend. You know? But I was just like, I say the same thing about like Mia and stuff. Like okay. I felt like it was just normal compliments I was giving you. So we gonna play? <laughs> we gonna play like this? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> oh my goodness. I just felt like it was normal compliments. Okay. Now <laughs> I do have this one video, but I can't I don't remember where it's probably on Snapchat. Mm-hmm. And we had went to a volleyball house. Yes, I know what she's talking about. Okay. I was there. I was aware. And you were there. Me and walked in. And uh-huh. you greeted me. You was like, ooh, bestie. The way I always greet you. Ooh, bestie, <laughs> fine. And then your hand swiped down from my upper waist down to my private area. And private? Yes. Your butt? No, my vagina. It was from right here. You he was like, ooh, bestie, you look good or something like that, right? And I had saw that pop up as a memory on my Snapchat years removed from dating that girl. And I'm like, that was inappropriate. And the girl was literally sitting right next to me while you did this. <laughs> so I'm just like, I can only just imagine looking back on things, how she probably did feel, even if it was too dramatic or too exaggerated. Seeing your best friend be able to greet their girlfriend like that. I just think y'all thinking too deep. She's just thinking too deep about it. Okay. I feel like since I am straight, mm-hmm. I feel like that matters. <laughs> I feel like that matters. Like, the fact that I'm doing all that, it's like, I do that with anybody. But it's the fact, because you have a girlfriend, I have to be all, like, buttered down, like, watered down. Like, I feel like I don't need to be watered down. Just That's who I am with all my friends, so why would I water it down? But this is like, it's too complicated None of your girlfriends like me. 
to this said, day, <laughs> you still, from, you still. I don't know why the other one didn't. I never talked to her. Yeah, the other one I don't really care. I already care. Okay, I'm one. just saying. It's the first one. She's being really dramatic. She was being dramatic, but <laughs> the first one had very valid reasons. Why? Because we was always together. It was very inappropriate. We had inappropriate um, interactions with each other, mm. uh, and that it took for you to set uh, boundaries. It took for uh, me to have to set boundaries for us to lessen the inappropriate interactions we were having. Now that I am in a relationship, yeah. When I'm not in a relationship. We can do whatever we want to do. We was not doing nothing. I am saying that I was just very. I didn't have any ooh, issues you know, with our relationship, dramatic. our friendship. I didn't have mm. any issues with it. But now being in a fr- a relationship with somebody, I can see why yeah. the other would have issues with it. Mm-hmm. One of the things that told me was y'all basically are romantic partners without fucking. <laughs> Y'all just don't have sex. That's what she told me. She just wanted to be as close as we were. Is that what it was? We were too close. She, she wasn't we were close too to you. Close. She felt like you were in competition. The only issues is that Naima just doesn't have sex with you. That's the issue. That's the difference between you and our relationship and you and Naima's relationship. There's oh. no distinction in it. It's too romantic. It's not <laughs> platonic enough. Yeah. Who was in the competition? You and. Y'all pretty much had the same relationship with me. It's just I was fucking her and I wasn't fucking you. That's what she said, which I can see. You don't see that in any way. I gotta be nice. Okay. Just, it's cool if you don't. I ain't gotta. I, we, we, we all I'm saying is, home. I don't know. I don't know what she sees. Okay. I just feel like she was being dramatic. I don't think I was in competition with <laughs> all the people. You wasn't in competition with her, but. If you had to describe how you and our you and my friendship was you mm-hmm. and our friendship, and you felt like I was her, competing, or do you feel like she was competing against me? Uh, I feel like she felt. I feel like I feel like it makes sense why she would view our friendship like that. Because mm. I guess I guess the only thing we needed to do was fuck <laughs> for it to be like how me and it was. <laughs> That's all it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying I I agree with. Okay. You just don't see it that way, and that's fine. That's okay. I, I understand. Okay, you but. you the other friendships you have with like say Mia, your other best friend. Are are those friendships? You, how you and our friendship was, and her you and her friendship is it the same or is similar? Some similarities in it. I feel like we. Like, she was in a... I feel like because we was, like, in close proximity with each other, it was easier to become closer. So, no, our relationship was never the same, me and her. Because mm-hmm. she was, like, at EIU. Mm-hmm. And I was at Dominican. Like, I really didn't talk to her when she was calling, unless she, like, drove back home. Mm-hmm. Um, so, no. I feel like we, we were just close because we was always together. Mm-hmm. Sleep in the same bed, you know? <laughs> Why are we sleeping in the same bed? Because friends. People sleep <laughs> Friends can't sleep in the same bed. Right. Friends can't sleep in the same bed. I used to paint your toes. Like, we did girl stuff. Okay. <laughs> I just understand, like, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think, as soon as you say I'm sleeping in the same bed, anybody that's listened to this episode, they mm-hmm. was like, all right. <laughs> Come People on People ain't never spending night, girls' nights with all the matching pajamas. You think they're not going to agree? Girls with an S nights, not girl night. Two girls. So you ain't <laughs> never seen two girls hanging out, sleeping over, I watching movies. Watching movies, yeah, sure. You watch movies? Yeah, we were watching okay. movies. Yeah. What are you we didn't do like we didn't do stuff that was inappropriate. Right. We did very much platonic stuff. Exactly. It's just the way that we talked to each other was inappropriate. The way that we are you, because I was not affectionate. The way that you were affectionate towards me was inappropriate. I just felt like you was my little my little poodle. Mm. Okay. I just felt like you was just my little friend. You was okay. adorable. Now why do you think so many people thought we was fucking? Delusion. <laughs> you don't think it was nothing that we was doing that would give that off to them? <laughs> no, we were just always together. Okay. And people have said the males that I've been encountering, you know how they were about yeah. you. How were they? <laughs> let let the world know how these lame ass niggas was. <laughs> the men were very particular with Tamaya. <laughs> they said I spent too much time with her. They said we was too close. They said, oh, Y'all done having sex, like say stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. they assumed that we had sex, basically. Mm-hmm. 
they were saying, oh, why are you so close to her? Like, mm-hmm. that's weird. Like, stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. They were basically hating. Still is to this day. Still asking, no, do you and your girlfriend still talk? You know, still say stuff like that. So it's <laughs> like, just I like, know who you're talking about. <laughs> like, you know? ass nigga. <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, every, literally every person except, you know. What was that? Cousin, except him, <laughs> but like the rest, the rest of them, like you know, literally everyone that you probably can think of that I've talked to, they've complained about you. Why are these men complaining? No, you man has nothing, it had everything to do with them, right? Mm-hmm. Nothing to do with our friendship. No, what do you mean? I said it has to do with the, our friendship. Mm-hmm. I hear complaining and saying that we were too close. Okay, uh, now that we are older. Do you think that you can maintain a friendship like how you had with me and be in a committed relationship with a guy today? Do you think <laughs> that you can balance both and not have conflict? What are you talking about? Like the, what we used to do? Yeah. The only conflict would be is because they know that you like girls. Okay. That's literally the only thing that it'd be. Because if I was like that with uh, any of my other friends, they wouldn't really find a problem with it. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, oh, okay. But if they see that... How you look and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. That's what really be making them feel some type of way. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm like, oh, you for sure. You be always run to hug Tamaya, but you don't run to hug me. I'm like, I'm excited to see you. No. <laughs> Why are you not excited to see your nigga? I'm excited to see my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Those were not my niggas. They were just people I was fucking with. Like, okay. Oh, that, oh that's valid. That's and valid. there was always, it was a lot of hating going on. Even when I would run up to another individual. Got the same syllables in the name. But I used to run up to another boy, uh-huh. like exactly like I do you. Uh-huh. And then the person I was talking to would be like, how come you don't run up to me like that? Like, it was just a lot of you know, pitter-patter. Uh, I remember you told me that one dude had said, why you don't look at me the way that you look at Tamaya? hmm Yeah. How do you continue <laughs> to just talk to a nigga after he say that to you? I didn't continue to talk to him. I was a- yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I was just like, I I didn't really care. I'm just like, if that's what you feel. I mean, after that, I was just like, I don't care what he's talking about. I'm still gonna look at Tamaya the way I want to. Okay. It was just like that, you know. Okay. Well, I want to share a um a, a moment with you that a moment. Um. <laughs> uh, I was dating a person, right? And that First person, time? sure. Is that the first one? Sure. Oh, okay. I was dating a person, and that person was sexually assaulted, too. Yeah. And they were sexually assaulted around the exact same time that you were. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, um, I don't know if, if I've told you this, but when I did set boundaries with you, we had a conversation saying, mm-hmm. like, hey, we got to spend less time together. Yeah. Hey, da, 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 because my, my partner ain't fucking with all of that. Mm-hmm. And right probably a month or something later, you were sexually assaulted. Mm -hmm. And so I pretty much set the boundaries, told my partner, hey, things should be cool now. You feel me? Hopefully we can rehabilitate from this. And I had to go back on those words that I told the partner because I have to be here for my friend now. My friend Mm -hmm. had something happen to her, but I couldn't communicate that to the partner. So the partner is lost in La La Land, angry <laughs> because I'm not doing what I said that yeah. I was about to do for our relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I do not regret any of those things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that severely impacted the breakup that I had with that person. Mm-hmm. And I think it did push me away from you too. Mm-hmm. Uh, because... Well, you got, I ain't gonna get too, I ain't gonna get too deep into that, but like that person felt like they couldn't come to me. One of the, kind of similar to the reasons that you said, like, you didn't want to be, you don't want to feel like you were going to get blamed or yeah. I told you so, or you told me about that. Situation. Yeah. And so that really did hurt me a lot because mm. the same way I was there for, there for you, I felt like I could have been like that for her if she would have mm. just leaned on me. Yeah. Uh, now you, being close to that situation, I did tell you about it. How did you feel as a friend mm-hmm. knowing that I was currently dealing with something like that? 
did you feel like you didn't know how to support or like how did you feel? Like dealing with how you dealing with you, dealing with her situation? Yeah. Did yeah. you have any like guilt or were you completely removed from the situation? Like so they ain't got nothing to do with me? Like how how no, what's going way. on in your head? Um I didn't know how to be there. I mean, we talked about it. Mm-hmm. Like we got more into it. And you took, like, Lily told me, like, you go to detail mm-hmm. on, like, what happened during that situation. Yeah. Um. So I did understand your frustrations. I think you shared your frustrations with me. Mm-hmm. Like, since you were there for me, you couldn't, she didn't feel comfortable coming to you. Mm-hmm. Um. But no, I didn't feel like it had nothing to do with me. I feel like you were there for me enough. And if you wanted to, like, shift that energy towards her then that would be okay because mm-hmm. i feel like i had a, like more than enough support like i was in therapy and all that stuff so i feel like you know i don't know that's just that was your girlfriend so i feel like that's what you had to do <sighs> um i think after breaking up with that person i didn't know for at least two or three months that that had happened to her I was yeah. It wasn't immediately immediate like I knew, and that's mm-hmm. why I broke up with her. I broke up with her, and then she told me that's what happened to her when we was together. And so, I do believe that <clears throat> that is one of the things that you probably wasn't aware of that would push me a little bit more away because mm-hmm. I felt like, damn, if I would have been like this way and real stern about her yeah. vocalizing the stuff that she had issues with with our relationship. Mm-hmm. She would have trusted in me a bit more and she would have not have been tempted to be around other circles that was Mm -hmm. attracted to her. Um, Yeah. uh, So I I was blaming myself for what happened to her because I felt like I wasn't being the best girlfriend I could have been to her. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I, I would say that that did push me away from you some. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just for myself, I just, I don't know, I just did it. I just... Got away a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that we are removed from college, what do you think are some of the reasons why we aren't as close as we used to be? I feel like you didn't think I was reciprocating the energy that you were giving me as a friend. Um, and is this because I blame myself for that because I felt like I wasn't really thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Like I just got too comfortable with just doing the bare minimum and not being, being like, oh, I, I'm aware that Tamaya does this for me. Maybe I should do the same thing for her. Mm-hmm. I got too comfortable with you just doing everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and we weren't together, like, as much. And even before we graduated, like, we weren't as close. Even, mm-hmm. like, even, like, your senior year of college and, like, so on, we weren't as close. Mm-hmm. So it was, like, it was already distance at that point. And then we, went, we, we didn't see each other a lot. It was like, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I didn't feel like I was reciprocating the energy. Um, I'm still working on that, to be honest, with the friend thing. Um, I was just too used to you doing everything, basically. That I feel like maybe I should have did more for you. Maybe I should have showed you that I appreciated you more in my life. Um, and I don't. I feel like I probably was a stressor, even though you already told me I was a stressor for you in college. I felt mm-hmm. like even after that, like the year after that, I still was somewhat of a stressor, like a lot of drama. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I feel like that was one of the reasons. Um, and I just feel like I was like bothering you sometimes. If that makes sense. Like I feel like you had your your group of people that you hung out with. Now I didn't feel like I fit in that. Maybe that's why I kind of distanced myself, and maybe that's why I didn't perform as I could, much as I should have as a friend. Mm-hmm. I feel like, oh, I don't feel like she needs me in those areas. Mm-hmm. Like I kind of like assumed. I never asked. I never spoke to you. I never confronted you about anything. I never came to you about anything. And I told you why. I was just not comfortable doing it. Like I was just scared of your response. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of those scared like, of being was, rejected. Yeah. I'm scared of rejection. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's my biggest fear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is it still my biggest fear? Mm. No, I don't really like walk up to people, but like if somebody wants to leave, they can leave. But I was definitely scared of rejection. <laughs> I was so scared. Because <laughs> I was just so used to you 
And so to, to hear that, oh, I don't want to be your friend no more, like I would have been like in a, a deep depression if I would have heard that. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> so I was just scared. Like I was just like, oh, I can't ask for that. Like I was just scared to confront you. I was scared to talk to you about it. That's why I kind of like didn't say anything for those, like that period, those couple of weeks after we stopped talking. I was just afraid to like say anything. I was like, mm. I said, well, she don't be my friend no more. I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> I'm gonna be sad. So it was really that. It was really me trying to protect my emotions. But I mean, at the end of the day, like we still became distant. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Um, I think it's one big thing that you didn't speak on. Which one? <laughs> Which thing, Om G? Uh, <laughs> remind me of it <laughs> so I can speak on it. I okay. Remember. Hopefully, hopefully you 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 can validate this because okay. this is something you don't did say nothing not. crazy. It is crazy. Okay, okay. Was. What is it? What is it? <laughs> Mia's birthday. Oh God, oh, seriously? Yes. What are you talking about? She had the red one. Uh, yeah. In 2019, maybe if it that, was 2019. It had, yeah, sure. Wait, it wasn't it was my senior. I think it was my junior. No, senior. Okay, it was twenty twenty. Yeah, and we already. I think, I either we had the chat after this or before this, where I told you that you are not my best friend anymore, mm-hmm. and you wasn't. You was like, well, you're still my best friend, and <laughs> and basically your your other best friend. She had a birthday party. We went to the birthday party at a club, and. You were intoxicated. <laughs> yeah. You got drunk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, and my god. you were really Philly, Philly hands on. I was just loving my friend. Of course. Just... Of course. You were loving your friend. Really Philly, Philly. Okay. Uh, and that Philly, Philly friend did not stop that entire night. Mm-hmm. To the point where you refused to let me drive us home. Oh, my gee. Well, I'll be in talks again. Stop. <laughs> this is madness. <laughs> oh, my God. Please. I cringe. Please. <laughs> please stop. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. Oh, my goodness. I'll okay, stop. so that I didn't know that. Okay. So what about that? What did you, I just made you feel uncomfortable. Extremely yeah. uncomfortable. Okay, I'm sorry. Extremely okay. uncomfortable. <laughs> and oh, oh, I wouldn't let the next day go without us having a conversation about it because it yeah. was too much for me. Uh, all the things that people say that they think that we have done mm-hmm. could have happened that night if you were a man. If what? If you were a man. If you were a man making the moves that you were making on to me. Uh-huh. All the things that all y'all probably be fucking, like all of that could have happened that mm-hmm. night against my will. Mm-hmm. And I didn't like that at all because I'm still like grieving calm down because uh-huh. still grieving over this not that but like that first relationship yeah uh fuck. Ooh-wee. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm cool i'm cool no I it's fine you passed this long <sighs> okay so Again, blaming myself for what happened to the first, Mm -hmm. that that first relationship. Yeah. And how I could have been a better girlfriend to her and listened to her voice, you know, needed boundaries in the the friendship that I had with you. Mm -hmm. That night was just the immediate, the immediate like smack in the face. Like, yeah, I really probably (sighs) didn't have clear enough boundaries with you. Yeah. To where you felt like you could take it a step further in our friendship. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, damn, I got no tissues over here. I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, and you, like, the next day, you was, like, sober and shit, cool. But mm-hmm. you was just, like, acting like it didn't happen. And I'm like, all right, ho. Like, we, you really don't know what you was doing last night. Like, no. Nah. I was like, that ain't. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of talked about it. But I don't think it was really, like, a serious chat. Because... Yeah. You got this little thing where you smile when you talk about serious shit. Yeah. And depending on how much, how well the person knows you, they don't know if you're serious or not. Yeah. So 
I was oh just, yeah, that's just to take away the awkwardness. Yeah, they probably. <laughs> I do that a lot, even now. I just be like, you know, it's just to take away the awkwardness because it's just it's to protect. Yeah, my demeanor. Yeah, so that was the cherry on the cake for me mm-hmm. that that night. <clears throat> I really mm-hmm. couldn't be your best friend anymore. Yeah. Uh. Like we could still be friends. Like I was, I always mm-hmm. was adamant about that. We could be friends, but we just couldn't be as close friends anymore. And yeah. you wasn't letting, you wasn't going for none of that shit. You was like, you still my best friend. Oh yeah, I just, it was this album G. Yeah, I was so in denial. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh my god. Like I was just, this was like my biggest fear. Even when we first became friends, like freshman year, mm-hmm. and we was like extreme close. I'm just mm-hmm. like, that was my biggest fear, like us not being close no more. Yeah. So I was just always in denial, like, no, that don't make no sense. Why would you not want to be my friend no more? Like, I was really in denial. Um, but I sat down and thought about it, and I understood why you made the decision that you made. And I'm not mad at you about it. Like, I don't hate you. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have no hard feelings towards you. It's too many people in the world that did me wrong for you to be one of them that I have hard feelings for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so um, it made sense. So I don't fault you for that. You just did what you have to do to protect yourself, uh, your emotions, your life experiences. So as we started getting older and we got past graduating college, why, whenever we would have conversations about why we're not the same friends anymore, Mm. did you, like, not have, like, some type of, like, answer? Because I would, like, say, like, why do you think we're not friends like that anymore? You really, I don't know. I don't know. It's Mm -hmm. like, okay. So, do you feel like that's something you've realized now or you now. did know then you just didn't speak on it? I didn't know. Okay. I had to, you know, I, I did a lot of self-reflecting about a lot of aspects of my life, which mm-hmm. I told you. So it just took, took a time. <laughs> it took some time. It just took some time. Um, especially when I got back into therapy. I think I was talking to you about that. Mm-hmm. Mm, it was recently when I got back into therapy for like a couple months. Um, so that really helped too. Mm-hmm. It really helped me like, Clear up some things that I was going through internally, um, trying to figure out um, without having to keep bugging you about it. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, I always see to my, but why are we friends anymore? So I like take that, I journal about it, mm-hmm. I think about it like, oh, this makes sense as to why she felt the way she felt. Um, I don't think I understood that back then. Like I said, I feel like I still. Was in La La Land, <laughs> so I feel like I was still in La La Land. I feel like, oh no, why would she want to be my friend? We always been friends, but I mean, it makes sense. That's why you don't want to be friends no more, or as, why you didn't want to be as close. Yeah. Um, so yeah, why you didn't want to be as close? Why you gravitated towards like other certain people more than you gravitated towards me at one point? Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, did you, um. Did you feel like we can get back to being close friends without having this conversation of talking about, like, having a real conversation about what has transpired between us since uh-huh. not being besties anymore? You think we just, do I think we could just. Like, we could have just went right back into it without <laughs> no, ever touching on it. at all. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> not okay. at all. What the heck? No. No. Cause we still didn't even really talk about it when we stopped being friends. Cause mm-hmm. I was like avoiding it, or I was like pushing you away, or like pushing it off. Cause I didn't want that rejection. Mm-hmm. So it's just like I wasn't really up for that conversation. I was scared to have that conversation. Yeah. So we can't just hop back into being friends because that conversation is going to always be in the back of my mind. Like I want to talk to her about that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I can't just hop into that. Cause what about the unresolved things that we haven't talked about? Yeah. Like you can't just ignore those things because they still matter. They still like are a part of the past. So, yeah, uh, I've forgiven you. Mm-hmm. I've forgiven anything that has happened between me and you. Those those things are past me. Um, so I'm I am open to like mm. getting close or whatever. I know it's definitely going to look different. Like yeah. uh, I have really strong boundaries when it comes to how I interact with friends and yeah. how I interact with my romantic partner. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, like I would, I'll make sure that nothing that like what we went through would ever happen again. Yeah. And I would just hope that like, <clears throat> it's so bad 
to the point where when I'm around my other homies and they got girlfriends, uh-huh. like my female friends, and let's say that they do like girls, I don't even look in their girlfriend's eyes. Like, Wait. I can't even look uh, in their eyes because I don't t- even want them to like me. Like, don't even like me. Don't look my way. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, it's, it's that bad for me. <laughs> As okay, soon are as you I saying feel like that a girl might like me, we can't be friends. You saying that? What are you, what are you trying to say? <laughs> I was like, I don't play when it comes to women liking me. Oh. Like I don't play with that shit. Even if I got an inkling that she flirting, all right. We can't like be, as friends, yeah, as friends. Like nah, let's knit, the, knit like that in the book. That's not gonna be hard for you to come. I mean. I mean, if you become friends like a random, yeah, but, it gotta be like, somebody from ground zero that never met me before. Yeah, I mean that's not they gonna, they gonna like you then. <laughs> no, like we gotta because we, I've had friends. Uh, I had friends that mm-hmm. also loved liked me mm-hmm. and had to sever ties with them, and we were friends since high school. Like yeah. I'm not friends with really all my high school friends. Like it was too. To not enough platonic in it, and I just yeah. I just can't do that thing those things anymore. Like that's that's beneath me now. I can't do it no more. Um, I feel like things get better with age. <laughs> well, I'm good on it. I'm good on that shit. Things get I better mean, age. I'm good. You're the only friend out of all those friends where mm-hmm. I would rekindle and try to like build a friendship with again. I feel um, like the friendship would work better now. Some not as unhinged. <laughs> as I used to be, yeah. and that I'm not as delusional as I used to be. I'm really just yeah. If chilling. you want to go somewhere, yeah. If you want to do something, we could do something. Yeah. But I'm not gonna be all dramatic, mm-hmm. trying to like you know be extra. Yeah, it's not that deep. I, I, I see. I see it in you. I it's not it that deep, you. but um, I told you the person I was. I hate the person I was in college, and I wish I would went. I don't know. I wish I would have approached it. If I had the mindset I had now, college, I would have been a way better person. Mm-hmm. And I would have probably still, you know, had my innocence, okay? Mm-hmm. Like, I would be a way better person. Like, I'm very firm on, like, my 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 new beliefs and mm-hmm. things that I feel like should be established before anything else happens. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me make sure I went through all my notes. Uh, I guess the last thing I would talk with you about before we um, get to the end of this episode is you being a nurse. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud that you could Thank just... Thank you. That's so special. You, you, work, you work really hard, you know? Oh, you work really yes. hard to get through that nursing program. Yeah. <laughs> I was studied for six to eight hours a night. It was a lot. Yeah. Um, now that you are within your field... Mm-hmm. And you were a, a in in I C U was a NICU mm-hmm. right a NICU nurse yeah isn't that where you want to be yeah with kids with the babies mm-hmm. yeah that's um it's like premature babies babies with like uh, disabilities deformities things like that mm-hmm. uh how has your experience been with being with exactly where you want to be in your career mm-hmm. it started off kind of rocky <laughs> um I worked with adults at first. Mm-hmm. I did not like it. I did not like interacting with adults. Um, the unappreciativeness, the, the, it was just too much. Yeah. Like, even they, like, verbal abuse, I didn't want to deal with that. Yeah. Uh, but I already knew that I wanted to work with uh, children, specifically, um, and babies. But they wanted, they required experience to get in those specialties. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of us in those specialties. Um, so it's really hard to get. I applied to nine NICUs. <laughs> nine. And only one called me back. Mm-hmm. So, um I am happy where I am. Um, I'm not happy that I'm on nights. I'm kind of getting tired of nights. I always feel drained. And I think I want to make that transition to go into, like, the days, the day shift. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's really hard to find day shift in that specialty. So I probably would have to change my specialty if I wanted to work in the daytime. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I would probably go to, like, school and nursing, something like that. But something re- revolving kids, yeah. always. Always kids. <laughs> Did you – have you ever, like um – did you did you lose like a lot of babies or have a you've been able to retain and not see a lot of babies die on um, your watch? No, I've seen like four. Did you ever get close to any of those babies? Mm-mm. Okay. No. So you haven't had like a patient where you did grow a bond with and mm-hmm. they passed away? Mm-mm. Okay. That's good. No. Um but seeing those things, like going through those situations, seeing the parent the parents are there when that happens and yeah. we have to like Get the baby 
like prepared to go to the morgue. Like we still have to handle the baby after they passed. Mm-hmm. Um, so seeing those things, it ha- kind of it has desensitized me to a lot of things. Yeah. Um, it like I don't know. It just made my mind stronger. Um, like the only time that I cry is when I'm mad. Mm-hmm. Like I don't cry out of sadness no more. Like mm-hmm. if I'm sad, I'm just I just this is how I look. Yeah. Um, but if I'm mad, like I'm really passionate about passionate when I'm angry. <laughs> so um, I cry with that. But if I'm sad, like I, I can't, like I don't feel like I get sad anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I like want to cry, I just be like I don't. I just feel like um, there's no reason to cry. I feel like I've seen enough to not be that sensitive to where I should cry when I'm sad. You know, crying is okay, man. Yeah, you know, crying I just is don't, good. It's, it's cool. I just don't do it. Okay, it, uh, my my body doesn't let me do it anymore because I've just seen a lot of things, death and all that stuff. Would you say that the the job that you do have? Uh, would you say that it's been very beneficial to have a counselor or a therapist on a mm-hmm. set that you frequently go to? Yeah. I haven't seen my therapist in a long time. <laughs> I changed over insurance, so uh, I'm still, like, figuring it all out. But um, for the brief moment I had, it was beneficial. Okay. It okay. was beneficial. What is uh, what is What has been, like, your highest point with being a nurse? The most... Um, Something that yours is very proud of. Um, just like being a support system for kids, mm-hmm. for babies, being a support for the, like the families. Mm-hmm. Um, that's basically it. I just like being a support system. I like seeing the babies like prosper, like go from like as big as my hands, to, like a full term baby. It's just like a satisfaction, a satisfactory feeling yeah. with that. Um, very satisfactory. I just like the, like, I don't even get paid what I should get paid, but mm-hmm. I'm still there because I like what I do. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm highly underpaid. <laughs> hey, trust me. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm highly underpaid, but I still say that because this is what I like to do. This is what I'm passionate about. Mm-hmm. Like, that specific population. I just have a, spe- like, a special place in my heart for kids mm-hmm. or, like, young, the young youth. Okay. Um, like, what about these people that that's in it for the money? That's a whole other segment. Okay. <laughs> Look at me start. Okay. I, I just I feel like if you're in it for the money, you're gonna feel it. Like you're gonna feel like as much as you don't want. Like you're gonna feel the the lack of passion. Mm-hmm. Like you're really gonna feel it. Cause I feel like exhausted doing this, and I love doing it. But I'm like always exhausted. I'm always tired. I always need like a break. Yeah. Like mental break. Like it's exhausting. But doing it, and you don't have no passion for it. You just in it for money. You're not going to enjoy it at mm-hmm. all. <laughs> you're not going to enjoy it at all. Um, you really, it's not, it's like it's not even easy to get through nursing school. So if you haven't figured out that you don't have a passion then, and you just still focus on the money, you're not going to be happy. I don't. <laughs> recommend it to anybody mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like oh do you think I should go to nurse school I guess I don't know <laughs> it's not something I would like I don't know people they like you know post their TikToks and oh I got Stanley Cups and all that I don't I don't have any of that mm-hmm. I'm tired all the time <laughs> I'm tired all the time you're too tired to get the Stanley Cup I'm cheap first of all <laughs> Stanley Cup is $65 not paying $65 for a cup I use the styrofoam cup at work, get the crushed ice, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, no. It's, I just feel like it's, it's passion-based. Even okay. if you don't get paid a lot, you still, if you're happy with what you do, then you just stay, you gotta stick it out. Okay. Uh, if it was something that you, if, how would you uh, describe me in five words? <laughs> you? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Because I, f- I, I just told Lizzie this the other day that, uh-huh. I feel like the podcast haven't seen um, at least the goofy side of me. They get the real serious to Maya. Mm-hmm. And so if you had to speak to other, other uh, if you had to speak to the other like uh, aspects of me, what would be like something you would bring up? Like the five traits? You could do five traits if you want to. Mm. I think you're... It's generic though, right? But you're determined. Like determined? You, yeah. Uh-huh. I think you told me when you first wanted to start this podcast. Yeah. And then like, look how like big it has gotten. Uh-huh. So I feel like that's like a determination to be consistent with this. 
Because mm-hmm. a lot of people, when they don't feel like they're getting the support that they need, mm-hmm. when they like, um, like branch out to ventures like this, then they give up immediately. Mm-hmm. And you haven't given up yet. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that says a lot about your character. Um, I think you're mature. You've always been mature, though. <laughs> <laughs> You've always been mature. You're already headstrong. Like, I feel like you will argue if you need to. I don't, I don't, feel, like you, <laughs> I don't feel like you'll back down from any argument. Uh-huh. Like, I don't feel like you, you'll let somebody say some dumb shit. Uh-huh. And I don't feel like you'll let them say it. You'll be like, why do you say that? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, yeah, I feel like you like, really headstrong. Um, okay, you but you goofy, though. Okay, I was about that name. You just say all the serious shit. <laughs> you more serious than goofy, though. Really? You've always been more serious than Goofy, even in college. Because yeah, like niggas, niggas need to not play with me. But you would happy, but you a Goofy person. Yeah. I think we got along well. Uh-huh. But I don't think you're Goofy to everybody. Yeah. Which is why people won't describe you as that. Yeah. Especially in college. Everybody, because like, they was doing dumb me. shit. Why am I Goofy with you? You dumb as hell. Yeah. I thought like, you were an asshole, so. Yeah. I learned. I, that. It was a girl that was boiling, like. Yeah. I saw. Is there somebody? Do- <laughs> <laughs> Don't say her name. What is was she doing? About? What was she doing? No, it's what you're talking about when she posted that status, right? Say it. Say it. The, the period cup. The period cup. Right. That's okay. What I was talking about. I was talking about it was a girl boiling a menstrual cup in a in, in was a there? residence hall. Huh? You was there when that happened. I wasn't there. Uh. But it's like that's the stupid shit y'all want me to show my goofy side to. <laughs> Why am I playing around with you? <laughs> You had a whole gang of girls trying to find a nigga that cheated on a friend. Ooh. When the girls was all running through the campus dorm rooms trying to find dude that had cheated on their friend. They're trying to find him Lord. and confront him. <laughs> this is so vague. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about? Say the name. Oh, oh hell. <laughs> Oh, there yeah. was a group of girls just r- going through multiple people's doors, knocking on people's doors, asking if so and so is in there because they're trying to get him to confront him about cheating on their friend. Yeah, that's crazy. Why well, am I being goofy with y'all? Uh, you a goofy person? <laughs> yeah, goofy person, Adley. You a little charming. A little, a little. You. Feel... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> Is there anything that we we did not touch on that you would like to speak about? Oh, give me something. Give you something. I'm giving you the floor now. I asked oh, all the questions. The you got anything that we did not touch on before we walk up out of here? Oh, I feel like we touched on everything. Okay. I think you got the you the you the man in the the, the man the matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, this is the 100th episode of Club Culture. This is the season finale of season five in real life. And we did get very much in our real lives this episode. With that being said, what does club culture mean to you? All right. So when I think of club culture, yeah. so I'm not a really big podcast person mm-hmm. at all. I hate them. <laughs> I hate a podcast. And maybe this is based on like what I see on Twitter, or what I, pops up on my YouTube but but it's the fact that it be like male based podcasts, yeah. And they don't do nothing but talk down on women, yeah. So I like the fact that it's very versatile here. Like I watch a lot of your like podcast videos, mm-hmm. and it's like different topics. Mm-hmm. It's not women ain't shit. Women chase after money. Like this, they like every fucking po- every podcast has gender wars. Yeah. I don't want to hear that all the time. And it's the same topics every single time with the same like dense ass niggas. They don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and that pisses me off. And that's why I was never really into the podcast culture. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just not for me. But I feel like this is something I could laugh at. Like, mm-hmm. It's like a comfortable space. Um, and, like, people grow. Like, the boy the boy said he, he got a damn library card. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I took a podcast, but... <laughs> <laughs> you got a library card because you... <laughs> Like things like that, like it's like a channel we can grow. You can get different topics. You're not going to hear the same recycled thing that other podcasts are talking about. Because mm-hmm. all they talk about is the same thing. That's why I unfollow. That's why I really don't be on social media because the same tired conversations. Here we go 50 50. This and that. It's just like, it's yeah. too much. I feel like it's very versatile, very diverse. 
a lot of topics that I can relate to, mm-hmm. a lot of things that you can learn from it. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't get to every podcast, Ugh, especially the male based podcast. Just turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> I hate podcasts. I watch YouTube all day, but I would not never click on no damn podcast that I see pop up. Uh huh. Yeah, no. What is uh? What would you say is probably one of your favorite episodes? Why? And I told you with your MT. You told me, but you got to tell them. You got to tell them. I feel like she was making some good points. I like to see things from like a parent's perspective. Mm -hmm. And like uh, somebody with kids, like not even just like somebody our age with kids, somebody older with kids to see how they like approach their children and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. When you said she don't whoop her kids, I felt that. It was, I was like, that's so, so amazing. I'm never, I never got a whooping when I was younger. Yeah. Only my brothers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because I never did nothing. Like I really never did nothing. But like I was so focused on like basketball and schoolwork, I never really did much. Yeah. So I never really got a whooping. Most I got was like yelled at. But I really felt like if like I did good whooping, I feel like I wouldn't be the same like emotionally. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that really matters, and I like the like the points that she made about that part. Like, okay. I feel like it, it changes the outcome of you if yeah. you're just getting beat all the day. Yeah. Like that's not why <laughs> you're just getting beat all day. I did hear your story. Uh, what story? About almost getting hit by a car. Oh, and Lord. I feel like that. I feel like that's. <laughs> Is that made you a better person? You feel like almost getting hit by the car made me a better person. I mean, it shouldn't have happened, but I feel like <laughs> I feel like it made you a stronger, a stronger person. But I don't agree with it. You think I need to be that strong? No, <laughs> I don't agree with that action. But I feel like because that happened, you like okay, I'm not gonna do this to my kids. So, so are you saying that because you didn't get whoopings, you're not as strong no. as others that got whoopings? I feel like I wouldn't like. Like I'm when I babysit kids, stuff yeah. like that, I'm scared to whip them. Yeah. Like I don't have that aggression in me. Mm-hmm. Like to be like, oh, this happens to me, like nah. Yeah. I cause I can't do it. Yeah. I I'm scared to do it. <laughs> so but then you see somebody else got whoopers, they be like, Oh, I'm whoop my kids. Yeah. I'm like, oh. <laughs> don't, don't send your kids over here. They're gonna be bad. <laughs> I can't whip them. Like I feel like it's just I feel like they're gonna remember it. I don't wanna be the person that they remember hit them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just too technical. But I'm just I'd be scared of that. I'm like I cannot raise my head in a kid. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I can't. I'm scared. I mean, a lot of people can. So you got to say something about those people. No, they no, can no. raise their hand to a fucking four-year-old. No, I can't do it. I think my, that's why I don't have kids. I think okay. they're going to be bad. <laughs> no. I don't know how to discipline. I feel like I got to be a, the right person to have kids with. On, on, could you be with somebody that does want to whoop the kids as a form of discipline? They're not going to like me because I'm going to be like, oh, come here, my baby. <laughs> like, they're not going to like me. I'm not going to agree with that. I'm not going to be like, that's what you get. Like, no. I'm like, why would you do that? I'm yeah. like, you are traumatizing him. <laughs> and they're going to be like, I'm all emotional. Yeah. I don't care. That's trauma. Like, don't do that. I just feel like the kids shouldn't be hit. Mm-hmm. I just don't like to see kids cry. I just have a soft, I told you I have a soft spot mm-hmm. for children. Okay. Shouldn't do that. It ain't no soft spot. That's it is. What, that should be the normal spot. Like, so <laughs> not, not in this generation, no. They yeah. be beating on their kids. And it's always all them stories where, oh, well, the mama's boyfriend <laughs> killed the baby. It yeah. just be terrible. Yeah. Like, you should not have that much rage where an infant like puts you to that point. Like, you shouldn't be put to that point for a baby to be touched. Yeah. I just don't believe in that. So that's why that episode, I really like that episode. Really. This this podcast mm-hmm. and the way that it turned out to be, when I told you I wanted to start one, yeah. did you think that this is pretty much on brand with the type of person I am to have a type of podcast like this? <laughs> yeah. You like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> you like to talk. You like to get your point across. And you like to for people to hear what you have to say. Okay. Not even like in a bad way. Like you like them to hear your point of view. You did that to me a lot. <laughs> you would like try to like you know overly explain as to why something is like something, why I shouldn't do this, and why I shouldn't do that. Uh-huh. So I knew that you were. This was going to be perfect for you. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> some people they say that that's me controlling, or I want them to be a certain way, or I want them to be like me. Is mm-hmm. that how you took it when you would hear me just? try to dig into you my perspective of something like back then yeah did it feel like i was trying to control you or tell you how to act and behave yeah, like I feel, I feel like you was a little stern with it mm-hmm. so yeah kind of <laughs> i feel like you talked to me like you i was your daughter mm-hmm. 
sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so it just felt like you. Uh, I don't know. You just. I just feel like you was just like talking down on me sometimes. That's how I felt. Okay. But I was like, I'm trying to understand, but I just don't. At that time, I didn't really understand where you was coming from mm -hmm. at times. Um. So a lot of our conversations had to do with boys, unfortunately. It's crazy because I don't even like him no more. <laughs> what the hell? Um, I guess the last question is, you have said that people, you've, you've listened to people talk about how they've learned from this podcast. Mm -hmm. Have you learned anything from the pod? Or if not from the pod, just from being friends with me? Because I think Lord. this podcast describes me a lot. Friends with you? You know how I so much. What have I learned? Being friends with you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say it like that, man. <laughs> no. I mean, you've always wanted me to like speak up and talk. Mm. You know what I mean? And be open. I'm still working on that. But I'm still I'm I feel like I'm doing it too much now. <laughs> like I feel like I'm telling my opinion too much. Like if I feel some type of way, I'm not mm -hmm. going to keep it in because I know if I keep it in, it's gonna eat me up. Like mm -hmm. I'm, eventually it's gonna come out. So I might as well just say it now. I think I've, I'm I'm doing that too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm doing it too much at work. If I don't feel, if I don't like agree with something, I'm going to tell you I don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. Like even when I talk to somebody, listen. <laughs> if I don't agree with it, I'm just I'm going to tell you this, and people don't like that. Yeah. And now people say I, I I talk too much. Like they they like say, oh, you just need to just let it be. Yeah. I don't let it be anymore. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not letting it be. <laughs> Because if you make me feel some type of way, I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. I don't care who it is, and that goes for anybody. Okay. And that's why I spend most of my time alone. <laughs> <laughs> because and I, I know that, like, you remember you said that that I was, like, looking for, like, not to be alone all the time. Yeah. But now it's getting to the point where I'm speaking, and if that leaves me to be alone, I really don't care. Mm -hmm. Long as you know that this is why I'm not talking to you anymore. Thanks. So, um, yeah, no. Yeah, and that's why I've been content in my loneliness. And I, if nobody wants to talk to me, I'm not going to force nobody to talk to me. I'm not going to hit nobody up. Oh, why are you not talking to? Me? It is what it is at this point. <laughs> if that's what you want to do, then that's what you want to do. I'm not forcing nobody to do nothing because I feel like I just got. I'm just. I feel like that's just not in me no more. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm too good for that. I'm not gonna do all that. Yeah, I feel like I'm the catch. So I think you, <laughs> I, I, that's all I was. Trying to get you to see, like, hey, girl. I wasn't the catch back then. I was crazy. No, <laughs> you still were the catch. You just. Delusional. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I, I acted with my emotions instead of my yeah, logic. Yeah, like, it, it was a lot of stuff that you were doing wrong, but those guys that you were going after oh. still were poor choices. Yeah, still poor choices. Yeah. Terrible so like, people. And, Annoying. And <laughs> that be like, that be like my viewpoint on, like, heterosexual relationships like mm -hmm. i i get why the woman is doing all of this energy and putting all this energy towards this relationship with this guy that could care less about it mm -hmm. the issue the source is the guy caring less but the girl is enabling this relationship to further hurt her because she keep enabling this relationship to exist when the guy has shown that he could care less right. so you were doing more than you needed to for a nigga that could care less exactly yeah um don't have time for that. Now, if you had any gems that you could drop. I don't got no gems. You don't have no gems? You ain't got nothing that you could try to teach to somebody else. Your life can be complete without a man. Mm. Um, you still can succeed in life without a man. You, you don't need to feel like you like, because we at the age where we probably like, oh, man, I need to settle down. Mm -hmm. I need to start a family. But when you realize... That comes with time. Like you don't need to rush into those things. Yeah. Um. Then everything works out better. Like I'm how old am I? Twenty six. <laughs> yeah. I'm twenty six, but I don't feel like those are things that like when I was younger, I'd be like, oh, by the time I'm twenty five, I'm gonna be married. Mm -hmm. But I haven't accomplished those things. But that's not something that defines my life. Like I don't feel like I haven't succeeded because I have not reached those like relationship goals. Yeah. Um. I feel like I'm still like just doing me. Doing what I want to do. I feel like my career, where I am in my career, and where I am, like, mentally, is enough for me to feel satisfied. Like, the rest of the stuff is just extras. Mm -hmm. Like, it would be cool to have that, but is it something I desire? 
No. Yeah. Do I desire drama and kids? No. Yeah. <laughs> like, nothing I really desire. Like, I like, like, that makes sense. Yeah. That's a good gym. Because <laughs> a lot of women are like male crazy. And yes. That's, that's a re- part of the reason why some of my relationships with other females have fallen out because mm-hmm. they're just too revolved around an individual. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm a, it's going to be an episode with me and Martel, uh, mm-hmm. and we're going to talk about women-driven males because yeah. the focus is always on women and them being defined by a man, mm-hmm. but we never talk about it the other way. Yeah. And me and Martel was having a conversation about that, so it's going to bring to the podcast. Mm-hmm. So look out for that episode. But okay. <laughs> I like your th- I like your gym. I appreciate your gym. Uh, thank you for coming. Dry. <laughs> I ain't even Yours, my lips probably more dry than yours. Thank you for coming <laughs> on the pod, man. I know you was nervous. How no. was it? How was it being on, being on, and, and sitting here? I chat? was always nervous to get on here because I already knew what you wanted to talk about. So that's why I never really been like, oh, Tamaya, let me come. You know, <laughs> we didn't have to talk about none of this, right? I know, but I feel like it was needed. So you said it was needed. Yeah. Okay. Well, we got again beat around the bush. What are we gonna talk about for two hours? It was a lot of stuff. I I'm good at this shit. We didn't have to talk about none of this. Yeah. Well, it's fine. I'm just saying. Okay. It need, that's what needs to be for you know a little season finale. Would you come back on? <sighs> no, the guest <laughs> episodes is always the hardest one. It's all about you. The other ones you just hear with the squad, and we just go through whatever. I, I got like on I the list. I know how to interject myself. That's probably what the only reason I'd be like hesitant. Yeah, like, I don't really know how to have group conversations. I know I never be. I don't really be in a group. What about <laughs> be you and Lizzie. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I have my. You know, <laughs> I've, I've, this 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 part of that we still doing this. Yeah, this recording. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, okay. well, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I, 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 there's I way thoughts. more. Of, okay. There's way more things that we could talk about my outside thoughts. of just this episode uh, that I think that you would be beneficial to speak on. Yeah, my thoughts. But I okay. can't. I couldn't come to you about these thoughts because I feel like you wouldn't understand it coming from me. From you? Yeah. Okay. So I can't say nothing. <laughs> okay. Because I feel like you're gonna be like, oh, you just stand me. So I'm like. I feel like you're not going to stand me in that aspect. But we don't have to talk about it. No okay. <laughs> okay. When it comes to that one. Okay. I got you. All right. It's well, too, too much that me. is <laughs> our 100th episode. We have a Patreon. So we're going on a two week podcast break. You will not get any episodes from us for two weeks. We got to get ourselves prepped and ready for season six. So in that meantime, I hope I don't look crazy. No, you don't. You look fine. And at B time, please join our Patreon. Uh, you get bonus episodes from us. You will no longer have two episodes a week starting season six. It will, it will go back to one. But the uh, pa- Patreon members, they get the extra episodes. So if you would like to continue to have multiple episodes from us a week, hit that Patreon up. We have a Discord where we will have all the people that tune into the podcast and our Patreon members be a part of our Discord. We can have chit chats. We can have live video chats with each other, chat, hang with the squad, all of that good stuff. Join our Patreon. Thank you. Now, if you're on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell. If you're on your favorite streaming platform, thank you for tuning in and make sure you leave us a rating. Peace. Just watch the damn podcast.